Yeah, I'm Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this week's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business, okay? There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag-and-drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Now let's start the show. Hezzy! Yo! Let me try to sit right. Bro, my thighs um, be looking thick as fuck on YouTube sometimes. Yeah, they do. No. Yeah, get on that single. Mm. Mm. Uh. Mm. Um, mm. Charla, oh, listen. there you go. That's thin. It is very important <laughs> that we bring this up at the beginning of the podcast. Talk to me. What's happening? Yeah, get comfy. Like, you know, Adidas is back with Yay. Oh God! You know what I mean? Like, what what are you gonna do about all these people out there saying that a debt needs to be paid? A Lannister always pays their debts. You're a Lannister. I'm gonna say um, that all these people need to shut the fuck up forever Ooh. because we live in a world where people are just getting stupider and stupider and dumber and dumber. Okay. And people read a headline but don't even bother to read the details. Adidas and Kanye West are not back in business together. What? We know this already. What do you mean? Adidas for months have been trying to figure out what to do with their inventory. We've talked about it here on the podcast. And by inventory, you mean all the easy stuff that they already That printed. they already had. And know? they have yet to sell. And they said that not burning it wasn't an option. And why wasn't that an option? Why is it not an option? Because it's a waste of money. Why would they? Burn, why would they burn all of the inventory that they had? How much? How much? In, uh, One point three billion or something. No, no, like that's that. how much they could make. That's not how much oh. they actually had in inventory. I think it was like four hundred million or something. Like that. Uh, yeah, five. Was it five hundred thirty four million or something like that? Whatever it was, they have all of this product that they're trying to get rid of, and I think what they the conclusion they came to was smart. Which was sell it, give give it to charity, which I'm sure will go to. The ADL and a bunch of other... So they're giving all the profit no, 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 or not, all the money to charity? They're giving, from what I was told, the profit. They're giving some of the profit to charity, which will probably be the ADL and other Jewish organizations. Kanye West is going to get the 15% that he's contractually owed. Yeah, yeah. And then Adidas is going to make their money. So, he, the so basic, at the end of the day, Adidas will probably end up breaking even, to be honest. So basically, they're doing it so they don't lose money. Of course. They're like, they're like we'll be in business with a guy who said anti-Semitic things. We just won't profit off of it. But we can't lose money. The only way this the only way this would work is if they gave the money to charity. It wouldn't work any other way because they'd get so much backlash from these organizations. But they are protecting their investment. That's what's interesting. Of course they are. That's and you're okay with that? It's business at the end of the day. But what if somebody said the N-word and then the business that they, let's say somebody said the N-word and Nike was like, well, listen, we already made a bunch of shirts with that racist guy. We got to at least sell the shirts and then cover if, our if, ass if and they, then we'll give the proceeds to the NBA. If they were giving the money the black, if they were giving the money to black organizations, I would not have a problem. But they're not giving the money, they're just giving the profit. So they're covering their ass first. What are you talking about? They're not giving them money. They're giving them profit. They're going to make billion, they're going to make $1.3 billion off and of And then they're going to give the profit. Yes. So yeah. they're going to take their 534 back. Yeah. And then however much left from the 1.4 billion, they're probably going to end up giving half of that to no, charity. Probably like a third at most. Well, it's going to be, it's going to yeah. be a third. It's going yeah. to be a third. I, I say, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but common sense tells me a third. Kanye's 15%. Yeah. And then the rest of that will be split up between Adidas and those charities. So that's the price to say you love Hitler, by the way, guys. Mm. The price to say that you love Hitler and Nazis are good people is 15 to 30% of $1.3 billion. Yeah, so that, if you that, have 300 million, you could say that however you want, and but apparently a, it's okay. But that's a very short-sighted way of thinking, and I'm going to tell you why. It's a very short-sighted way of thinking because I don't know how much Kanye's monthly expenses are. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much Kanye's yearly expenses are. Yeah. But if you're going to forego generational wealth for years to come yeah. because you want to say whatever you said about Hitler, that's yeah. just stupid to me. No, no, no. This is, a, this is a one-time thing. And by the way, this is a great lump sum of money to have, but he's already rich. It's uh, dumb. It's a, You're right, 100% it's dumb. But it is putting a price on it. Like, what's the price for saying the N-word? Uh, I don't know, because we've never seen a situation like this. But I don't think the price is, I don't think the price Kanye is paying is worth this. Like, don't, I wouldn't look at this 15% and say, oh, okay, I'm getting 15%. Well, Kanye ain't that's paying cool. it. Adidas is paying it. But that's, they're they're contract, contractually obligated. That's why, that, that, what you're bringing up no, is- No, they're not. Enough. They could debt it. They just no, don't want to lose money. They can lose Clearly the money. They, no, they can't. Listen, 
They can. No, they, they can. can't. If they're selling Yeezy product, if they decide that they're selling Yeezy product, but that, that they're contractually obligated no, 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 to pay no, no, Kanye. No, 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 I'm saying, I'm saying that decision is sell it. They could just burn it all, or they could just give it away, or they could do something else with it, right? But they're deciding to continue the deal. Listen, we're in a capitalist country, baby. You know what I mean? But what that got to do with me sucking dick? Because he's not back in business. This is where we get into the nuances of deals, and this is why lawyers are very important. There was no yeah. lawyer present when you made your deal. Yes. But some people might say, some people might say mm -mm. that the fact that Kanye is profiting off of the sale of Adidas mm -hmm. means they're in business together. Those people are stupid. This is old. This is the inventory that they had when they were in business with Kanye. If Kanye was coming out with something new, if they said, "Look," they, by the way, they would announce it. Hey, Kanye West is back in business with, with Adidas. Right. I mean, we're, we're we're doing a new line, Yeezy Season 2000 Fall Collection, whatever the that fuck would it mean is. They're furthering their absolutely. So, so you're referring to them continuing their business deals with them, it's, and you don't see this as that, even though you do acknowledge. It's not. But you do acknowledge that they are engaged in business because Kanye is profiting off the sale of the goods. It's, they're contractually obligated to pay Kanye West his 15%, mm. which, makes all this, which makes all the sense in the world. If they're choosing to sell this product, they can't cut Kanye out of that Can situation. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. When you made the, 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 the deal, mm -hmm. did you have a dick in mind? <laughs> no, I use that as an analogy uh, to show how much I feel like this shit is never, never going to happen. Ne it's never going to fuck. Have happen. you had people? Like, I would yeah. bet me sucking dick on sucking dick. I would say, hey, I'll <laughs> suck a dick if I ever if suck, I a, suck dick. a dick. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what the whole meaning of that phrase is. Right. To show how asinine, when I made the thing about 6 ix 9 yeah. you're not beating these charges. Right. Which he didn't. That's but true. digital dickheads think he did yeah. because they he made a deal. No, yeah. that's not beating charges. He made a deal. Now, let's just say mm -hmm. you had to. Never. But hypothetically, hypothetically. It's actually a mouth bet, but it's an ass bet. It is a bet. It is yeah. both, yeah. yeah. What is there one that you would start with? No. 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 I just would never suck dick. But if you had to. It would have to be like something like clone yourself. No, nah, it would have to be clone like clone yourself. It's not even really sucking dick. It would have to dick. be like survival of the free. The world is on the line, and okay. even then, I might be like, nah, we gotta go. Only because that's it might selfish. Just, oh, no, 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 no. Your Only, daughters, no, 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 no. your wife, but me. I'm gonna tell you why. I gotta look at the state of the world. <laughs> yeah, I gotta look at the state of the world. Okay, if the state of the world is like. Bro, the apocalypse is coming anyway. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you are the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> apocalypse. Apocalypse. Apocalypse now. Name of the podcast. I don't know where we're going from here, but <laughs> apocalypse now is the name of the podcast. Apocalypse now is fantastic. Okay. Um, okay. State of the world is on the line, damn. right? Mm -hmm. You got to do it, but you get to choose the one you do it to. Yeah. What are we thinking here? God. Remove my ribs. Make. Remove my ribs, God. And do that's yourself. What you, that's what we did before, right? Because you just got to suck dick. I you have suck, to suck someone else's saw. dick. I'm going to suck oh, my own wow. dick. I thought I had it with the clone, but then you still got to look nah, at you, nah, and nah. you was going to be talking I'll bad shit about you. Because you was going to be like, yeah, you would suck dick. That's, that's, yeah. I, I suck yeah. my, I suck my be, own yeah, dick. That's fine. You would be the worst person to suck. That's fine. I couldn't have nobody holding that. I, I couldn't have nobody holding that over my head. Literally or figuratively. Bro. Literally off figuratively. Bro, imagine there's another you walking around the world knowing that you also suck <laughs> dick. <laughs> and people dapping him up. He's like, nah, I, I got suck. Oh, man, that the funniest shit happened today, man. My man, you know, uh, you watch Power, right? I've seen Power. Lavelle. Uh, I lied to you. Yeah, La I haven't seen Power. <laughs> I just lied to you right Lavelle, there. I have not uh, seen Power, but I'm familiar with the show. What's Lavelle last name? Crawford. <laughs> no. That's the comedian. Salute to Lavelle. I saw Lavelle yeah, recently. Crawford, What's Lavelle's right? last name? Lavelle. Johnson. Lavelle Lavelle. Jenkins. Johnson. Shut Jenkins. up. Lavelle, <laughs> plays, <laughs> Lavelle plays Drew on Williams. Power. Washington. Lavelle, Lavelle Washington. Adams. Adams, yeah. He plays Drew on Power. Just and, name famous white presidents. And Drew is Lavelle Adams great. And Drew is gay on Power. 
right? But Lavelle's not gay in real life, right? Come on, bro. He's not. Once he's, you he's, play he's, gay, he's, you gay. Nah, he's engaged. You got a fiance and everything. Oh, really? And so, I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, oh, really? I mean, you play no. gay? I mean, he got. I was in the closet, bro. Yeah. Technically oh, in what? the bathroom. Uh, what was it? Benders? Benders? Yeah. Oh, Peaky no, Blinders? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, there's Johnny. There's, there's Johnny. Johnny. Oh, there's Johnny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a sex scene, bro. <laughs> I never saw that. It's not really a sex scene. Oh. But he plays Drew, right? Drew's I just a gay get character. Fucked. Yeah. Really? They show you getting fucked? Yep. Nah, they don't do it because I wouldn't do any of that. Hand but on your knees with the end of the thought shit? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, they said, uh, I, I, they were like, all right, can we just show your pants around your ankles and take a shot of that? Get and the then fuck show out your here. hands on a tile wall and take a shot of that. Really? And I was like, all right, you can do both of those. That's acting. Uh, no, nah, I wasn't acting. Oh, come on. It's <laughs> acting. I was, act I was dreaming. He was dreaming. <laughs> that wasn't. That wasn't he was action, dreaming. Bro. But he played the gay character on Power. Yeah. yeah. And it was funny because <laughs> when the but idiot he's really I not am. gay. <laughs> what an but, idiot I am. No, would you play gay? You gay? <laughs> See, that's Drew. Yeah. But Which when one? The, but when the interview was over, let me take the funniest shit. When the interview was over, he was drinking a cup of tea, and he goes, he goes, shit, this tea bag just busted on my lips. No yeah. way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> And no I go, way. I go, damn, Drew. <laughs> He's still in character. He was still in character. He's committed. Oh, hell no. Oh. I don't know why hey, I thought it was Oh, yeah. Um, now that I notice it, they don't really be kissing. I mean, they just kiss nah, multiple times. they hitting the side. No. He does a fantastic job. He's from the theater, though. I found, I mean, it was a great interview. Him and uh, Woody came to the Breakfast Club. They got to use the CGI from you people for that shit, bro. Nah. Whoa, bro. He keep putting his neck into it. Nah, that's it's just no. it's good acting. All the gay scenes just back to back to back. It's good acting. Oh, bro, come on, dude. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, good acting, son, man. Son, 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 son. Why does this bother y'all? No, I'm getting horny, bro. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Can't okay. be getting so getting horny in here. Like yeah. McLean. Come on, we you know need to chill the fuck out. You like that? Two beautiful black men going at it like that, yeah. bro. You like that, uh, that that trans woman at the University of Wyoming? I like them all. Oh, you heard about that? What happened? Pull this up, Taylor. Yeah, pull, pull it out. Pull this up, Taylor. Wh whip it out. We just hey, warming Taylor, up. Taylor. Hey, we just warming up before we get to shooting. <laughs> Meaning, we're talking about Ja. Pull it up, Taylor. Come on, come up, on. Taylor. What is the trans woman in Wyoming? I'm gonna show it to you. I want to read oh, you. You're brave headline. to be a trans in Wyoming, bro. Look, Wyoming sorority sisters speak out after lawsuit launched what over the transgender fuck member. Just... <laughs> Listen, Wyoming. That's Wyoming. what they call them. Wyoming. <laughs> Wyoming. <laughs> Why didn't you? You had the article, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Wyoming yeah. sorority sister speaks out after lawsuit launched over transgender member. One sister says there's fighting for women's spaces. Now scroll down. Now look at this shit, right? Yeah. Three Kappa Kappa Gamma sorority sisters from the University of Wyoming and their attorney joined the Ingram Angle on Tuesday to speak out after commencing a lawsuit over the inclusion of a transgender member. Now, host Laura Ingram reported the sorority member in question, Artemis Langford, allegedly would sit on the sofa in a common area watching the sisters walk by for prolonged periods of time. One allegation she added reportedly stated Langford was seen having an erection through, lang through leggings. Come on, yo. <laughs> come on, yo. In a statement yo, come to the on, yo. the National KK KKG chapter said it is aware that litigation and that it intends to address concerns through the legal process. While we cannot comment in detail on this pending litigation, it contains numerous false allegations. Kappa Kappa Gamma values diversity and does not discriminate based on classes protected by state, local, or federal law. Now, what I found interesting is one of the women said that when they approached the other members, the other members told them if they don't like it, then they drop out. This is where the inclusion conversation confuses me, right? Because inclusion doesn't mean um, making spaces safe for one person or one group of people, mm. right? So if you have a group of women saying, hey, this makes us feel unsafe, this makes us feel uncomfortable, Shouldn't we at least have a conversation before we just jump out there and say, if you don't like it, drop out, allegedly? Hmm. Shouldn't a conversation be had? Yeah. Yeah. And what are they saying about that? I mean, I guess that's why they're going to court. If these women have gone so far. But that means that the other sorority members are into it. They're cool with it. I thought you got real bricked up just now. I thought you said, <laughs> nah, I don't know what you was reaching for. Settle it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Nah. 
For real. I, I, I think what happens is that you need, oh, is that the one? Is Can we play the some of the clip, Taylor? Play some of the clip for Andrew. Play some of the, uh, the ladies talking on, on Laura Ingram's show. But the other girls in the sorority have to uh, agree to have that person as a new member. Yeah, right? they, they a, did. I think it was one of those things. And I, I could so the majority of the girls were into it, and then these girls were not. Well, I don't know if they were into it from the beginning, but let's just say, hey, also, yeah, sorry. Let's say you're hearing about it, and you're yeah. like, you know what? Maybe you know, trans woman. Let's be inclusive. They bring them in, but then they bring them in, and then they see this. They see all this shit happening. You know what I mean? Right. So maybe your your your, your idea your, your ideas can change. That's actually Megan Kelly, but you could play that one too. But one real quick before you play it is one of the things I find quite interesting is that uh, um, sororities historically and fraternities have been incredibly discriminatory based on the way you look. So like, oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Half a sorority no, in my school was like the hot blonde chicks. You didn't have to be a hot blonde chick, but like that's kind of the identity and it made it easier yeah. to get in. I think there's a female, black female sorority where there was like, they had like the paper bag rule or something like that. I forget which one that one was, but it was like probably the light AK skin girls, probably the AKAs. AKAs. All, all, all of that, all of that has changed over of, time. But of, there, there was. I, I, I you're, you're absolutely right. I remember that there's too. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a frat. There's a few male frats that are like the jocks, right? The Q's. The Q dogs, exactly. Yeah. And then eat your so, pussy from the back. Whoa. Okay, that's, that's cool too. For. That's cool too. Mm -hmm. That's fire, bro. Yeah, that's what this is. That's ovaries and fallopian tubes. <laughs> <laughs> I started to throw it up, and I was like, you know, I ain't gonna do it. I don't want to, they get mad about that type of shit. But but uh, but I guess what I'm saying is they've been so discriminatory. It is very interesting to see a situation where they're trying to discriminate, which is historically consistent. <laughs> and hold on. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. What, what? I just got it. What? When he said when the cues throw it up his yeah. ovaries. And over is the fallopian tubes. Too. Yeah, that's what it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you was like holding the cheeks up. No, no, <laughs> that's what I thought you was doing. No, I'm stop, doing stop, actual... stop. Don't throw up their hook though. Don't do that. They don't like that. What do you mean? They don't like when the people throw up their set. Yeah. This is I'm stop. I'm not a Q. I'm a, I'm a gynecologist. No, you look like a Q, especially when you wiggle I'm your fingers. I'm a gynecologist with my ovaries. <laughs> yeah, you and my look like the Q when you wiggle your fingers. You like the Q and LGBTQ. Do I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm an LGBTQ dog. <laughs> LGBTQ dog is nuts. Um, LGBTQ dog. We need the gay cues. Where the gay cues at? I'm sure it's gay cues. Really? I'm, 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 sure, I'm sure. Like I would think. But what, what you were saying? You don't even remember. I don't remember. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of another joke. Yeah. But <laughs> because, <laughs> not, because a lot of times the Q dogs were football players, right? Yes, the Q dogs were the jocks, absolutely, and the Kappas were the pretty boys. Right. What you're saying is, is absolutely true. But what about true. the LGBTQ dogs? Do you think they join because they're like, are there some tight ends and some wide receivers? In here? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of annoying. <laughs> no, Dude, shout out the Qs. I'm saying, it's, I'm saying the LGB G. What is it? What is it? L B G uh, L G B B Q. LBGTQ, LBGTQ community plus LBGTQ plus LGHD Disney plus community plus community. Yes, but play the play uh play play tale play the sorority sisters. That's the scary part. It's it's a weird feeling just to know that I could run into him anytime full access to the house. But this just goes to show like. We need women's spaces for that reason. Like our house is our home, just like any else is home. Like you go home at the end of the day to feel comfortable and relax in your own skin. And you can't do that knowing that this individual has full access to your house. It is also really you, uncomfortable um, just because some of the girls in the house, I know they've been sexually assaulted or sexually harassed. So some girls live in constant fear in their home and our home is supposed to be a safe space. And to paint you a picture just a little bit further, men are never allowed on the second floor of our house except for move in and move out just to help us lift heavy things upstairs. So it is seriously an only female. Well, this, is what I, this is what I don't understand. What I don't understand is if you have a group of women simply saying they feel unsafe, and they feel uncomfortable. How come we can't even have the conversation? Hmm. Like, shouldn't those women be allowed to have a voice? Like, isn't that what real inclusion is? Inclusion means don't exclude 
anybody. Hmm. So, I, and also, I don't understand why they didn't have this conversation with those young ladies beforehand. Why didn't they tell him? Why didn't they tell them what this is going to be like? You know what I mean? Why didn't they talk to those ladies and talk to those those women that are in the sorority and tell them like, hey, this is what life is going to be like with this, you know, uh, trans woman. Staying here in the sorority, yada yada yada. Like, hmm. you know, yeah. I feel it's, like it was a good compromise, though. Like, she, the trans woman, can't live in the house, but she can still be in the sorority. I'm so. fine. I'm fine with that. But if these young women are saying, "Hey, the trans woman is sitting there when we come out of the shower, mm. and they're looking at us when we come out of the shower, and they're visibly erect," and I, and also in the lawsuit, it talks about how the trans woman likes women. So the trans woman is on Tinder trying to pick up uh, other women and things of that nature, which is true. Caitlyn Jenner, you know, is still is in the women. She's you know what I mean? Hoes still. Fl Flame is in the women. So it's like, do you have trans women who are into women? So I, you can see why that would make somebody uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Why would? How can we not see how that would make a woman uncomfortable? Yeah, yeah, I think it makes perfect sense, dude. Yeah, not in this world that we're in. The only thing I dislike about that video is that they kept referring to her as him. They was misgendering. Yeah, yeah they was misgendering her. I, I think I don't know if they was misgendering her on purpose. They was just misgendering, you know, her as they saw it. You know what I mean? What they should just keep saying is the young lady with a penis. And he was, or she was fully erect. Yeah, that's what they should keep saying. Cause, cause that's what really when you when you hear that, that's what you're like. What are we saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? that, that's yeah. that's what they, that's what they should just keep saying. Young lady with a penis. You know, show, us, show her some respect. You don't think it's helpful to have, like, I don't know, someone open a pickle jar or some shit like that? <laughs> like, What do you mean? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, I'm just saying. I don't a, have no problem with this person being in the sorority. The only thing I have an issue with is these women saying they feel uncomfortable and unsafe, but yet they're the ones, allegedly, that are being told, well, just drop out. And it's not the first time we heard that. Like, whenever, mm. you know, women complain about, you know, uh, when we saw the basketball team complaining about playing against a, a, a trans woman, they told they made the women's team forfeit. Right. That makes no sense to me. So, so that, we're just not yeah. listening to women anymore. Period. All right. Yeah. Um, let's get to the story of the week. All right. Let's talk about your boy, Ja Morant, South Carolina's own. Free Ja, <sighs> man. Free Ja. South Carolina's own. Yeah. Free Ja from his own. Ignorance. That's what we need to be. That's what mm. John need to be freed from. Mm. Uh, Grizzly star John Moran could be in more trouble after once again flashing a gun during an Instagram live stream. Video surfaced over the weekend of Moran holding what appears to be a handgun while riding in a vehicle. Back in March, Moran was suspended for eight games after flashing a gun during another live stream at a Denver nightclub. The Grizzlies are NBA have not yet commented on the video. Adam Silver did. Adam Silver definitely commented on it uh, last night during the NBA draft. Yeah. Um, what's your thoughts? Um, just, it's, it's incredibly stupid. You know, we were talking about this on flagrant a little bit, but, uh, yeah, I just think that like the NBA players start to disassociate the money that they're making from their behavior. And I think that's the biggest issue right here. Hey, break, break bound on that. Break that down. Like he makes half a million dollars every two weeks, whether the team wins or loses. Really? So, I thought it was like every of the game or whatever it is. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. saying, I'm like the check comes in no matter what. Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like if we suck a bunch of weeks in a row, like our numbers take a hit. That's right. And our potential money in the future that's takes right. a that's hit. Right. That's you know right. what I mean? But a guy like everything him, we do is performance based. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. But they're not in the NBA. You have these guaranteed contracts. That yeah. is what it is. And then, so I think what happens is you start to separate yourself a little bit from the money. You don't see the actions. Like for example, if he only got paid if the Memphis Grizzlies won a championship. Please believe a lot of other shit in his life would be different. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not realistic, but still, you know, um, you, you, I, so I think that there's this, this huge separation. And once there's that separation from the money and your behavior and not only your behavior on the court, but off the court, just a completely separate from the money and no real repercussions. Like we know of three or four infractions. That means there's 30. Oh, yeah. He is a handler on the team oh, that yeah. is with him all the time, that knows he's getting fights during pickup games, knows he's flashing a gun, doing all these things. Like that, that you do not have a max player without a handler. And this guy is, you know, the handler has been telling the team, yo, this kid is wild. He keeps on doing his fuck shit. It's eventually going to get out. Four stories came out. That means there's 40. I mean, 
Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what it takes for him to learn a lesson because no team is going to drop him. And even if they do, they're going to continue to give him second chances. And there really are no repercussions for his actions. The league would have to suspend him for a year. And even if they did that, I don't know if anything would change. I think there's repercussions. Because the money's guaranteed. I think there's repercussions for his actions. And I agree with everything that you just said. It, it goes back to what I was saying about Kanye, though, right? Ja got a four year, $196 million contract. Is that the only money you ever plan to get? You're only 23. So think about this. Think about this. It's the only think, money you ever need, bro. Is it? Ask LeBron. LeBron, ask LeBron how he felt 20 years but, ago compared to now when but, he's a billionaire. But, but you have to look at a guy like LeBron, who's been at peak stardom since he was 16 years old, has never really gotten in any trouble, has this, this like I'm billionaire icon mentality. Now. Even when he was younger, dude, like the guy, you never saw LeBron getting caught with fucking pulling out straps and like no. beating people up. I guess what I'm saying is he had his eyes on the prize from a very young age. This kid doesn't have the same discipline. He doesn't have the same drive. He doesn't have the same hunger and it's not even close. But that's what I mean when I say what he's doing is very short-sighted. Do you think a kid like that can't run through 190 plus million dollars? Oh, you're a hundred percent right. <laughs> you know but what, what I'm mean? saying is a kid like him, Who's, who's not exercising discipline. And I hate that we use this excuse that he's like only 23 years Especially old. Especially when you're talking about somebody like Braun. In his field, he has enough examples of people who've done it right. And there's other, 20, on it. There's other 23 year olds in the league right now Speak who on are it. not flashing gun shots. Speak you on don't it. hear about them punching 17 year olds in the head and all that Speak other shit. Speak on it, you're 100% so, so, right. So it's like we keep using that young excuse, but is that really an excuse in the NBA? Bro, when you see a kid on the street pull out a gun or a kid get arrested with a gun who's 21 years old, 22 years old, whatever, right? When you see a 16-year-old do it, you go, they got their whole life ahead of them. But when a 22-year-old gets arrested, you go, what the fuck is wrong with you? You're 22, 22 years, years old. Why are you old? acting like a kid? When, when a college athlete gets in a bar fight or something like that, we go, you're 21 years old. Why would you fucking do it? You're That's on right. a football team. You're on whatever. Like, I think there was that quarterback who got in a, a, a fight in a bathroom. Do you guys remember that? He got his shit rocked. Oh, I forget. Yeah. It was, anyway, but uh, but we go, what the fuck is going on? And then this guy is 23. He's been in the league for a while. He's been an actual professional adult for a while. And we're making these excuses if he's a child. He's not a child. Well, what makes it more egregious is two months ago, he did the same shit. And he went through the whole press tour and sitting down with Jalen Rose and did the mental health thing and said, he said himself, I know what I have to lose. Oh yeah, his chat GPT response. I, I need to be more disciplined. I gotta hold myself responsible. He said those yep, things. Yep. And then two months later, you're on a video holding up a gun Again? Yeah. No. Come on, man. No. Insanity, insanity is, is doing the same thing over and over and expecting, expecting different, different results. Result. I, I, it, would, it, would, it would make me feel better if they came out tomorrow and said, yo, he's got a problem with drugs. <laughs> I'm serious. Or he's got a problem with alcohol. Because like, then there's an excuse, yes. right? Yeah, I hear what yes. you're saying. Like, you want to know that there's an issue here. You don't want to know that somebody is just that unreasonable or lacks that You don't want to think somebody, this is just this, just this stupid. Yeah. You know what I mean? And once again, you can go back to the money aspect. You think that's the only money he's going to ever make? And do you think somebody that's showing you how irresponsible they are can't run through $194 million. Oh. He wouldn't be the first NBA player to run through hundreds of millions of dollars, oh, by the way. not at all. You understand I mean, what I'm saying? The list and, also, and once again, yeah. we talk about $194 million taxes. He's not in Florida. He's not in Texas. So he's still got to pay. He's got taxes. Taxes in Tennessee. He's got agents. Federal taxes, agents, he's got managers, managers he's lawyers. Got lawyers. So it's not $194 million, people. Not at all. He's already lost $40 million. Wait, really? So. Yes, he lost $40 million. From he, what? He didn't make no All-NBA team this year. And you, he didn't, you tell me why John Moran didn't make any of the All-NBA teams. Because if he would have made just one, the first All-NBA team, second All-NBA team, third All-NBA team, he gets a, another $40 million on top of the $194 million. No way. Yes, that's but a he fact. Can, he can still do it, you're saying, in the Kendrick next Perkins few years. Kendrick Perkins said on ESPN, I didn't vote for Ja because of his off-the-court behavior. That's, that's what Kendrick Perkins said, and I'm sure a bunch of other people felt like that. So you've already cost yourself $40 million. Already. And you know what, what's interesting here is that like he could do all the, 
the, the, the fun dances, listen to the NBA, young boy, do all the things. Nobody would really give a fuck. I'm sure the league would be like, ugh, I wish our next superstar wasn't so like ingrained with hood culture or whatever they would say. But as long as he's not toting the guns, as long as he's not doing that, they don't really give a fuck. Well, LeBron's been fun. doing it for years. LeBron will get online and listen to the Every the dopest single rap album that drops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you can do that. Yeah. And by the way, I hate you. When I say I hate you motherfuckers, I hate you motherfuckers that keep saying this dumbass, uh, well, Politicians, you know, they pose with guns and they have their kids posing with guns on Christmas cards. Can I just tell you the one fundamental difference? Yeah. The one fundamental difference is these politicians, they get money from gun lobbyists. These politicians get money from the NRA. These politicians' campaigns yeah. are funded by the NRA and these gun lobbyists. So they, of course, they're pro gun. Also, they're, no, yeah, yeah, of go, course, go, they're pro gun and pro gun legislation. But here's the difference. Yeah. Job Morant. Is signed to the NBA. Yeah. He gets his checks from the NBA, yeah. not the NRA. Yeah. You fucking idiots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really just that simple. 100%. And there is a difference. I think a lot of times, like, if Ja Morant was toting his gun to a song that was about hunting buffalo or going out with your boys and hunting a deer, and he had one of the Elmer Fudd rifles, and he's chilling with his orange vest and walking around, I don't think that he would get nearly the amount of scrutiny as if he's in the car with his homeboys, <laughs> listen to hip hop, this probably the song is about shooting up the ops and then bringing out the car. I, 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 <laughs> like, I'm gonna tell you something, I don't think hip hop has anything to do with it. I don't think the what? music, I don't think the music has anything to do with it. I'm gonna tell you what, y'all, once again, people are not thinking. Well, make the argument, what is it? Easy. That's good. I'm in a fucking club where there's alcohol, probably drugs, and I'm on Instagram Live waving a gun. What about when he's in the car? I'm in a car driving, listening to music, and I just pull out and start waving a gun. Why? That's dangerous and reckless. Does anybody remember Plaxico Burris? Yes, 100%. I, I, I guess I could be in a club and just be waving a gun and the gun could just go off. Yeah. I could hurt myself or hurt somebody else. I could be in a car just waving the gun. The gun could go off, hit myself, hit somebody else. Yeah. I don't think these people, and I, I, listen, I'm not saying I'm right on this. I'm just saying I, don't, I haven't heard anybody on ESPN or anything, say anything about hip hop or the music. It's the fact that he, the way he throws the gun around is yeah. just reckless. It's so hard given pushback because it sounds as if like I'm uh, trying to excuse Ja for his stupidity. You are. But I'm not though. But what I am trying to just say is you say, hey, he's being extremely short-sighted. A lot of people in their early 20s are very short-sighted and do stupid shit. So what? Yes, and it doesn't excuse it. Mm -hmm. But if he's, like, emulating a lot of the people he's fans of, because in their videos they are toting guns and they are waving them around while they're having fun with their friends. So if he's doing those same things, he's really just having fun with his friends. But we look at it so stupid, because I'm like, yo, you're putting... It is stupid. You're, it when is I look stupid, at the rappers yeah. in the videos, I think it's stupid. But, but I mean, the you, only thing... You, you, you just brought up rappers. Yeah. Because he said videos. But that's I guess what, what I'm saying. saying. It, he, they're emulating the rappers. What are the rappers talking about? Shooting their ops. So it's, Not it's, just the rappers, though. People are doing that period sure, in this sure. social media era that we're in. Sure. I guess what I'm saying is it's hard to distinguish between, because I think race plays a component in absolutely everything, right? So it's, it's impossible. Like, I just got nothing to do with race. It does, right? Because I think when you see a black dude listen to hip hop and then bringing out your gun, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to shoot the ops. That's where I'm going. But I'm also, not thinking, oh, I'm going to go pheasant hunting. But also because, once again, and I'm not saying race don't play a component in everything because you're absolutely right. But once again, we look at this shit as, a, as isolated incidents, which sounds so fucking stupid, right? We look at these two situations of him waving the gun as isolated incidents. You gotta factor in everything else mm -hmm. that he's been accused of over the past year and some change. That, oh, you, I, I you have, you have to he got fact. away with all of but, them. But the, and all of them had something to do with a gun. No, no, you're right. You're right, 100%. <laughs> so, no, 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 no. So, no, no, no. so, so, so it's not just he's yeah. waving a gun. It's like, this dude might oh, be yeah. a, we're, a thug. We're talking about two different things. Like one is, one is the connection to rap and why listening to rap and put, pulling out the gun during the rap song is going to make people have a different reaction yeah. than if some white dude is, that's an NBA player has a hunting rifle over his shoulder and is listening to country music, and, right? And Because the association it, isn't going to be violence towards other humans. It's going to be violence towards animals. But, and, and for whatever reason, we're okay with that. And the record shows. But, 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 but that's one thing. Yeah. And then separately is the record, right? Separately is what else he's gone through. Yes. I do believe, though, sincerely, if John Morant, now it might be different, but I sincerely believe if John John Morant was out with Phil Jackson, and 
and they were walking around in Montana and they had rifles over their shoulder and they were listening to some Luke Combs country music, nobody would say a single fucking thing. If anything, they'd go, oh, look at John Morant, cool. Like he's getting in touch with nature. He's but that's context, he's hunting. I think you're making my argument. Yeah. We're on the same page. Yeah. I think the context of this is, oh, he's doing hood rat shit with his friends, right? To quote the genius, what was the kid's name? Who knows? Yeah. No, 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 not a little kid. I know you're talking and, about. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and I think that's what makes everybody go, whoa, 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 what the fuck is going on over here? We don't want to promote the hood rat shit. And that's exactly what this you should, is. We should be asking ourselves, and you're not wrong at all, but we should be asking ourselves, why does he want to do that? Listen, he if let's just say let's just say he wants to be like all of those rappers. Yeah. You want to be them and they want to be you. Yes. You the one that's up 300 million, Ja. Yeah, none of them But it's of, always yeah. been like that. No, it hasn't. No, it has always been no, like that. It's not only hip hop, it's athletes want to be uh, athletes want to be rappers, athletes want to be musicians, be, yeah, musicians yeah, yeah. want to be yes. athletes, yeah. Yes, yes. It's always been like that. The grass but, is always but greener. He's the one who should be in the driver's seat. He's the one who's up three hundred million dollars, yes. and this is not to excuse the behavior, but he You're has got, the behavior. he has gotten away with it. You you guys just said, oh, if there's four things here, that means it's forty. So that means the league has known about those forty other things, and they've been letting well, him let's, live let's, his life, well, and he's been getting away with it. Well, let's so talk about now. It. It's easier to make a mistake like this when I've done all these other things that I got away with. Well, let's talk about it. He didn't necessarily get away. He's getting sued by the seventeen year old. So right. no, no telling how much money he gonna come up off, have to come up off for that shit. Yeah, the, they did an investigation on the laser thing. Nothing, nothing came of that. I don't. I just heard about this situation in uh, the mall in Memphis when he threatened a security guard. I don't know what came from that. Right, he got an eight game suspension from the the last gun toting thing. Yes, and he's for the past two months. He's been on the thin ice. So it's, let, it's kind of been a probationary so let, let, period. Let me ask Just you guys. Little slaps on the wrist. Well, so what you think is going to happen now? They about to make an example no, I know, out so. of him. Yes. He's already lost 40 M's. And that's the only reason why I bring the age component into it because he doesn't have the wherewithal mm -hmm. and the foresight to see I what he with really that. can lose because he's been getting away with it every time I, thus far. I totally disagree with that because once again, he's 23. There's other 23-year-olds in the league who aren't doing this. There's other 23-year-olds that have came before them, before him that haven't done this. And this right here, look at that. Look at that headline. And there were Grizzly older. John Morant losing out on 40 million after being named all NBA. The only Not reason John Morant, who led the Grizzlies to a number two seed and averaged 27 points a game this year, off the isn't court. on the all NBA team is because of his off the court behavior. Can I ask you guys a quick question? When you guys were 23, did you feel the allure of the street life? And were you aware of the stupidity of chasing it? At were 23? you chasing it? Like no, I wasn't doing that no more because I had just started. Uh, I was doing radio, so I, I I think I had been doing radio for a little bit at that time. I think I I've been doing. I think I I think I was on the air. I definitely was on the air by the time I was. Did you feel a pressure to live up to? Um, yes. What these rappers uh, uh, were well, talking not about? pressure to live up to the street life, but I was still in the street, like those were still my peoples, you know what right. I mean? But I realized you can't do both. And how did you- I realized you, that early. How did you break away from that? How did you- I stopped cold turkey because- Did I, you tell your I friends? I found myself getting in trouble still. Oh, okay. For shit that I had nothing to fucking do with. Right, You know what right. I mean? So that's what made me be like, oh, no, nah, I can't, you know, I can't live both lives. Like right. I can't be around the same things I was around. Because you recognized that it was gonna hurt not only your now, Absolutely. but your future. Absolutely, a hundred percent. But Alex, so now imagine if those times where you were getting in trouble, eh, just a little write up here or a little just slap on the wrist that he's like, ah, whatever, I kind of got away with this. Like, that's what the this, uh, level of punishment no. he has had thus I'm a, I'm far for a, a person who's about to bring in 200 mil. You're, you're, you're not wrong, but you're, you are wrong because there's a million people around you telling you what you stand to lose. And this is, this, this is what I hate about these conversations. We put ourselves. We can't put ourselves in these people's shoes because ain't none of us in the fucking NBA. Let me, let me none say of one. us have to deal with the NBA. None of us have endorsement deals with no, Nike you're right, you're and right, Powerade. Right. Let, me tell you, let me tell you one thing about this. Is most people I would imagine around Ja Morant right now are making money from him. Absolutely. And Absolutely. when that is a situation, unless these are like your dear friends that you've known for a while, it's very hard for them to communicate to you that you are fucking up because they start to worry about their ability to survive. Oh shit, if I go criticize the golden goose, maybe I'm out of here. Not to mention, 
Like you see the people around him are videotaping him all the time. They're getting tons of clout off of it. Yeah, all yeah, these people yeah, yeah. jump in their lives. They're seeing their Instagram followers go yeah. up. It's like, it's a it's a good life for them too. They don't want to fuck up their life. We've seen this. There's been certain people, friends of ours that may be, or colleagues of ours that maybe, I wouldn't say friends, but people that we're aware of. And we've seen, you know, living lives that maybe we wouldn't advise. Absolutely. And the people around them, don't seem to be saying, hey, slow it down. Or, or, or they tell them, and, and then the person get... still keeps doing what they want to do. Because yeah. everybody keeps talking about Ja hanging around the wrong crowd. Shit, Ja might be the wrong crowd. Yes. You it, know what I'm saying? He might that be the influence. Like, that, that's what it looks like to me, because I'm not blaming none of the friends. I'm not blaming the father. The only person that's held accountable for Ja, uh, ja is Ja. And the crazy thing about Ja is, once again, go back two months ago. This man did the prep walk, baby. He did the, all the press conferences. He did these conversations where he told us he knows he got to do better. Yeah. He said he has to make better decisions. My suspicion. He said he knows yeah. what he has to lose. Yeah. If a person says all of that, you're either the greatest liar of all time or you're just incredibly stupid. I think it's a, I think it's a combination of both. I think that like I think I don't think Ja in his entire life has been held accountable for his actions outside of the success that he's received from playing basketball in an incre incredibly elite way. So in other words, he's probably gotten in trouble plenty of times. He got in trouble in high school, right? We never they, heard about it though. Because they keep everything quiet because he's so good at basketball. You know, this is- Enabling the behavior. I think, exactly. but I think something he doesn't believe there's repercussions for his actions. And why should he, if, if he got caught beating up a 17 year old, nothing happened, got caught putting the gun out, nothing happened. The strip club photos come out, nothing happened. The mall security thing, nothing happened. If nothing ever happens, why should he believe anything's gonna but, happen but now? But we keep saying nothing happens, but that, I don't, that's not necessarily true. Send an eight game suspension is nothing to him. You don't know that? I don't. You, Come on. We say that, but how do we? we, we that's a lot of money you, lost, and, and you, you love basketball. No, no. The, just because you're spending doesn't mean you lose the money. You still get paid. I thought it was a non-paid suspension. I don't know if legally they can do that for not breaking the law. He didn't break a law. If you break, why, why do we keep saying this? It's not about legality. It's like the NBA It's about morality product. clauses in the NBA. Mor Those are vague. The the thing about that, that where they don't want to go to to trial about that, I was asking some guys in the league, is that you can't make the argument that he held the gun in a menacing way. It is okay yeah. to hold a gun. You have to brandishing it in a menacing way is illegal, but just holding it in a dainty way, which is what he did. Mm -hmm is not menacing and not illegal. Listen, but in the NBA, and I, I, I looked this up, in the NBA, the morality clause violation is anything the company feels is damaging to their brand. That's why the strip club is worse than the gun thing. Because it's legal well, no, the strip, to- but No, the strip club is terrible because he was on a work trip. He wasn't just in the strip club. They was there for a game. Of course, of course. But the NBA is looking at him in a strip club with girls all over and the money everywhere. And they're like, this is not what we want. The NBA is looking at the gun thing and they're going, are we really going to tell half of our fans that they shouldn't shouldn't hold guns? Because half of the NBA fans have guns. I don't and love think guns. that's what. That, why, why do we keep saying it? it, it this it, is all. This what, is not. I don't. This I'm is. I'm just not telling a, you what I've heard from my friends at the NBA. I have heard the opposite from you from. Yes. Anybody at the league? <laughs> yes. That's it's not about two way. There's plenty of players. They got pictures of Draymond Green holding guns. There's plenty of players <laughs> that have been pictured holding guns. It's not the guns. It's the recklessness of how he's using the guns. In the, pic, in the video, he's waving the gun in the strip yes. club. He's waving the gun in the yes, car. Yes, yes, on top, yes, 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 yes. On top of everything else. Yeah, yeah. The that reckless, he, yeah, that exactly. he's accused of. It's yeah. the recklessness of yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. He's, Adam Silver yeah. even said that on the, the draft last night. He's it's not, not about the guns. He's not using like proper gun safety protocol or whatever it is. But, but, but uh, NBA, in the NBA, the morality clause violation is anything the company feels is damaging to the brand and harmful to relationships with fans, sponsors, and broadcast partnerships. Listen. It's simple. If you don't want to abide by all that, quit. Just retire from the fucking NBA. Give up your Nike deal. Give up your Poway deal. All of that shit. If you don't want to abide by whatever those rules and regulations are, just quit. Hmm. Ooh, no, they don't want to do that. Or just playing devil's advocate from his point of view. Oh, I just got to keep balling out. Because if I keep balling out, I'm good. That's not true. It is true. That's not true. Nike didn't drop them. How you know they after won't? The first, I mean, after the first situation, they, they didn't drop them. Yet. They haven't yet. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm making Alex's look. argument. Yeah. He, he, he hasn't received any serious repercussions from his actions. They said- $40 right million now, is a lot of money, bro. No, but that's not taken away. Yeah. It's, like if he, you, it's not like he had it and they removed it. It was he could get it. 
But he didn't. Uh, it's right there. No, it's, it's different. Though. He would have made. He would have. He would have made All NBA. Why would not? Why would Ja Morant not make All NBA? Three, three Bro. All NBA teams. Ja Morant can't make one. Okay, I'll give you an example. Jesus the, Christ! What we know about investing now, damn. Have we just put a couple dollars in Google, a couple dollars in this, a couple dollars investing back when we were fucking 17, 18? Let me tell you, with the uh, amount of money we would have right y'all think, now. Y- y'all generation thinks very short sighted, and I want y'all to look at this. It's th- not. The yes, generation. it is. One hundred and nine. He's making one hundred and ninety-four million. Let's just cut that in half. Number one for taxes. Let's go back to managers, agents, and lawyers. Once again, do you think he can't run through $30, $40 million? He can, of course. It, no easily. And then what? I don't disagree with you. But no, I'm but saying I know, he's and, just thinking short-sighted. All of us are. Because we're saying, like, he didn't lose anything. He hasn't gained anything either. No, no, no. Uh, he can lose when, when people say he, you can lose everything you the, have. No, we're on the same page. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. We agree. hundred percent. We're all on the same page. We agree. Well, we're, we're we're not saying that he didn't lose something. We're saying in his mind, it doesn't feel like there's been a punishment yet because nothing that's been guaranteed to him has been taken away. Well, he had no guarantee he was going to make all team NBA. Maybe in his mind he started saying, yeah, I'm going to make that shit. But it wasn't guaranteed to him. And so far, everything guaranteed to him has still been guaranteed. So it's like, well, next year. We're going to see. If when, Nike when, drops when, him, that would be big. And you know and what? Might, Adidas is going to come swoop in and take him. His deal with Nike ain't number $12 million. Wow. For now. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Josh's still so early. Yeah. It's only been four years. This man can't have the potential to make... A couple billion dollars. I mean, he could be the face of the NBA. He could be the face of the fucking league. But I don't league. think he has the discipline, I'll be honest with you. <sighs> what you said is the key word. And that's what that's what uh, I'm realizing about this era that we're in. And this era don't even just mean age. It's just a lack of discipline all across the board. People really feel like there shouldn't be any consequences to your actions. And discipline <sighs> is what separates the greats from everybody else. Period. Dude, you I gotta mean, have discipline. Like discipline. I don't want to be. A, you don't want to be a flash in the pan. People will forget. Yo, if, if if things don't work out for John ja Morant, he never wins a championship. He never wins an MVP. He doesn't have a long NBA career. He ends up fucking up the money he has made. Who wants to be that? Who wants to be that? The, 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 don't jaw your life now. Don't jaw your <laughs> life. Don't jaw ja Morant your life. Who wants to be the cautionary tale for NBA players and athletes to come? Now you're right. Who wants to? Who wants that? You're 100% right. right. He just doesn't believe that that's him. Yep. And he just doesn't believe anything will happen. But we're going to see. And even with his apology that he put out today. Which was so generic, it was unbelievable. <laughs> like, There's no way he could even read that. I would love to see him just read that off of a paper. I'm sorry for the people I disappointed. Who did you disappoint? Like, let, let me read this. Yeah, everybody oh, calling him a dumbass in the media. Did that's you see? That's not disappointment. That's just because you're a dumbass. I'm not disappointed in you. You're just, that's just, you're, Yo, you're a dumbass. Did, did you, you see? You are a bit disappointed. Did you see Lil Duval? Lil Duval looked up what chat GBT would uh, have as an apology, generic apology for when you fucked shit. up. It was almost word for word the Hilarious. exact same thing. Hilarious. <laughs> Where That's is funny. it, Taylor? I'll get I'll get the Sorry. Duval version up. No, I'll get Hilarious. the Duval, little Duval version up. So, Hilarious. Chat GBT is phenomenal. Yeah, it's terrible. And amazing at the same time. You saw what Elon Musk said yesterday on CNN. What did he say? George Soros? No, he said... Um, I actually screenshot Okay, John Morant. I know I've, uh, I've disappointed a lot of people who have supported me. This is a journey, and I recognize there's more work to do. My words may not mean much right now, but I take full accountability of my actions, and I'm coming back or something. Or I'm committed to what? Working on myself? And I'm committed to committed to work on myself. Chat GPT, right? I deeply know I've disappointed a lot of people who have supported me. This is a journey, and I recognize this is there is more work to do. My words may not mean much right now, but I take full accountability for my actions. I'm committed to continuing to work on myself. Brother, wow. brother Ja, the best That's apology true. is changed behavior. Like There's nothing Ja Morant could say right now that anybody would give a fuck about. Because two months ago, you said the same exact shit. Mm-hmm. Two months ago, you sat across from Jalen Rose and told him you understand what you have to lose. By the way, if he understands what he has to lose and he chooses to lose it, that's on him. But I'm not, I can't sit around and be like, damn, man. I can't make excuses watching this brother blow his life. Do I think he's going to do it again? Taylor just asked, do I think he's going to do it again? I have no evidence that shows me he won't. <laughs> like, yeah, like, and that hurts. He's from South Carolina. I want to see him win. Like the the only thing worse than John Morant's personal choices are Zion Williamson's outfits. Like <laughs> it's uh, it's unbelievable. 
how bad my South Carolina brother from from South and I dress terrible. Wait, wait, if why? I why, tell why? You, I, if I, this is Google Zion Williamson outfits, Taylor. I dress terrible. If I'm telling you Zion Williamson dresses terrible, it's unlike it's like every day he tries his best. To come out of the house with the worst fit possible, yo. <laughs> Where have you even seen him? Just go Google Because he's not it. playing. That's the point. He's always on the sidelines with these horrible outfits on. Yeah. Okay. But a lot of these players have Type in Zion Williamson outfits, fits. Taylor. Not just Zion Williamson. And we just don't see him. Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, that's crazy. <laughs> nah, click that one. <laughs> no, that's absolutely crazy, <laughs> Oh what my is God. that? I don't even know. That's, that's, are those pearls on the jacket? Bro. <laughs> that shit got to Bro. No, I that's love that shit. It just don't fit. It just don't fit right. But. It's what? No, that ain't rips. That's like beads or something. Salute yeah, design, man. It's like, oh, it's it's like a jean jacket. But you know what? I would much kind of fly. I, would, I ain't going to lie, bro. It just don't fit him good because he's a really big dude. There's but. a TikTok about yeah. Zion's horrible outfits that is <laughs> Yo, hilarious. <this> is <laughs> Oh, yeah, Zion Williamson has officially been crowned the worst dressed NBA. That looks crazy. Hold on, go to that one with the eye of Sauron. Look, oh, no, this headline is hilarious. Scroll back up. Zion Williamson has officially been crowned the worst dressed NBA player. Playing more games would probably shift focus from his terrible fashion choices. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I would much rather Zion be making horrible fashion choices than horrible life choices, though. What? That was right. What? I, I, no, I said Zion. Zion, yeah. I mean that. I would, I would rather Zion be making horrible fashion choices than uh, terrible life choices. And I wish, I, but t on the flip side, yes, I wish Ja Morant, I wish this was his only problem. I what wish Ja's outfits were his only problem. What do you think about the uh, NBA players using the, the walk to the arena as like a fashion runway? I think it's, I think it's dope. You're into it. And the reason I think it's dope is because that's another stream of income. Because that's probably what gets them mad free clothes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sure that they probably do get paid by some people to wear certain brands because everybody knows that they're going to be walking. Mm. You know what I mean? That shit is better. That shit, that, that shit right there is probably better for a brand than um, a fashion week or some shit yeah, like that. Yeah, or like an influencer Or the Met post. Gala. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that shit is way doper. And for somebody like Russell Westbrook, people laugh at Russell Westbrook for whatever reason. I don't think y'all realize Russell Westbrook got his own clothing line. Does and he that really? that shit is booming. Look, pull it up, Taylor. Yeah. Russell, Russell Westbrook got his own clothing line, and that shit is booming. That Wait, shit is really? doing phenomenal. Yes. <laughs> pull it up, Taylor gang. Pull up Russell Westbrook's clothing line. What's the name of it? I forgot the name of it. Uh, honor the gift. Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's, yeah, it's honor the gift, right? Yeah, yeah it's honor the gift. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I, I'm sure Russell wears a lot of his own shit. The overalls and the pants and the shorts and all of that shit. The hats. They did a collaboration with Jordan. Like, the joke be on y'all 90% of the time. You're laughing at Russell Westbrook, but that motherfucker is caking. caking. And I think that that shit makes a lot of money too. Google would honor the uh, honor the gift made, Taylor. I want to say it was like a hundred, but I don't I don't want to misquote anything. But that shit has done very well in sales. Yo, get that money. Should we pay some bills? Yeah, let's pay some bills, man. Salute the mood. Okay, whether you're new to cannabis or an old pro, there's no denying that many of the products on the market seem iffy at best. And when you want to relax, iffy is the last way you want to feel. Mood puts an end to guessing games, okay? It's 100% federally legal, Delta H and Delta 9 THC. You can have it shipped straight to you. No doctors, no waiting, just affordable legal THC. For a limited time, Mood is giving our listeners free Delta 9 gummies and 20% off your first order. Visit hellomood.com and use our code IDIOTS, okay? Mood offers federally legal forms of THC extracted from hemp plants. All of their products are regularly third-party tested in drug enforcement agency registered labs, sourced from small family farms and grown organically. The experts at Mood have tested and tailored different strains for specific moods, like energized for when you want to seize the day, or creative to get inspired and mentally stimulated, and plenty of versatile products that go with whatever mood you're going for. Euphoric, erotic, sleepy, chill, social focused, however you like to take THC, Mood has you covered. Ready for a good time without the guesswork? Work, order your THC products from Mood today. And for 20% off your first order and free gummies, go to hellomood.com and use promo code IDIOTS. That's hellomood, M-O-O-D.com, promo code IDIOTS for 20% off your first order. 
and free gummies. Also, this episode has been brought to you by the one, the only Squarespace. Did you know that? Were you aware of that, Charlemagne? Because if you want to make your business legit, you need a place on the internet for it. Simple as that, okay? Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage your audience, and sell anything, your products, your content that you create, even your time. I'm telling you, if you have a business, you need a website for it in order for it to be legit. And Squarespace has got your back, not only with the domain, but also with building the site. It is the best place to go build your site. Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. They have these member areas where you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, and newsletters. You can create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive sales. You're going to stand out in any inbox with the Squarespace email campaigns as well. So you can collect emails, subscribers, and convert them into customers and start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site, colors, and logo. Built-in analytics measure the impact of every send. Use those analytics and insights to grow your business. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are the most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. So, Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot with the offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase. Now let's get back to the show. Let's do some church announcements. Oh, let me see. Uh, Honor the Gift posted. See, that's good. Last year, Honor the Gift posted $5 million in revenue and Westbrook expected to grow 30% year on year in 2022. I mean, that's incredible. That's incredible. You start your own motherfucking... Cloven line, you make five million dollars. Yeah, that's incredible. That's that's phenomenal. Good for you. And shout, out, shout out to B Hampton. I think she's like the art, the creative director. Really? Over there. Yeah. She used to be his like stylist, and now she became the creative director wow. for the brand. That's uh, awesome. Church announcement shows. What we got? Yo, um, add in some shows, man. We're also gonna come to uh, Salt Lake City Memorial Day weekend. Those tickets are up right now. Um, if they're still available, you can get them at theandrewschultz.com. Thank you guys so much, everybody who came out to the shows in Phoenix. That was incredible. So great to be be back on stage, man. I love. That's my favorite thing to do in all of entertainment is stand up. So it's it's really great to be back on the road again, and. Uh, and yeah, and then we add another show in Reno and then Calgary. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much, man. Yeah, I don't have nothing. I'm supposed to be doing a daily show this week with that damn writer strike. That it, might be a minute before that wraps up. It's, it's not. I, I, I just I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I don't see it wrapping up no time soon. Wow. Because I think that that Chat GPT AI thing is uh is like I'm 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 with the writers. On pushing back against that shit and can saying you, can like, can you explain to the people what the the well, hang up is in well, the contract? They, well, I mean, it's a lot of different hang ups in the contract, but that one in particular, they're just basically saying ChatGPT or AI can't write none of our scripts. And then the studios are going. They pushed back. We're like, no, we want them to be able to write scripts. They haven't said they want to yet, but they just pushed back, which tells you everything you, fuck, you fucking need to know. Because the what second saying? they don't need the writers to write, oh they're my not god, gonna hire them. Oh my god! You know the only thing I don't understand about the ChatGPT AI shit though. Is um, let's just say you AI replaces three hundred million jobs, like they're saying. If humans don't have money, who's going to fucking spend money at these companies that are replacing humans with AI? The idea, I think, with all technology is that the jobs shift. So, like, instead of coding for websites, you're going to be coding for AI. And you're going to be developing like more sophisticated. Prompts. But they say the AI can code itself, right? So like it, every technological advance creates more technology. So like websites come out, and now instead of you know I don't know engineering a, a farm, maybe you're going to be an engineer on some tech shit. Yeah, you're going to learn how to build websites or whatever. And then AI is going to come out, and you're going to still need humans to build these other components or whatever it is. So that's not how capitalism works, people. <laughs> like- Generally speaking. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it will eliminate certain industries. And I mean, that's what, what's happened with globalism, right? It's like once we found the ability to like make products in other places, the places that in America that made those products kind yeah. of fell apart. I think it should scare everybody. I was watching CNN yesterday. I had to pull up his name, ChatGPT Creator. Hmm. 
And OpenAI CEO Sam Altman is urging lawmakers to regulate artificial intelligence during a hearing. And he said the same thing yesterday. He said, and it was him and Elon Musk. Well, Elon Musk, I don't think he was at the hearing, but I guess they was doing an interview with him on CNN. And Elon Musk was like, his exact words was, because this was the lower third on CNN. I sent it to Chris just to scare the shit out of him. Um, but it, the lower third on CNN was, Elon Musk warns there's a chance AI destroys humanity. And the CEO of the, the creator of ChatGPT says the same thing. So it's like this. If there's a chance something could destroy humanity, why do we need it? Why take the chance? I mean, we got nukes. Everybody don't have nukes. Andrew Schultz don't have possession of nukes. I don't have possession of nukes. You don't have possession of nukes. A country has possession of nukes. I see what you're saying. People that are everybody, in leadership position has Everybody has access to it. Gotcha. To, what the fuck? Yeah. Could you trust everybody with a nuke? Yeah, no. No. What the fuck are we doing, y'all? Yeah, it is tricky, man. What are we doing? It is tricky. I mean, do you know anybody who really uses it? Do you use it at all? They wouldn't tell nobody because they're out here cheating, probably coming up with these fire-ass jokes and fire-ass yeah. POVs and using it on their own. They wouldn't tell nobody if they were. Okay. Bro, I tried to it's use it. It's not good with jokes yet. You tried? Yeah, I tried. Let's That's try. Who got it? You got it? You got oh, it? Actually, you know what? I did try. All the weeks that you said like I needed to warm up, that was oh tragic. Oh, my <laughs> Maybe it's your execution, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Maybe for real. Sometimes execution, yo. Yeah. Sometimes I wasn't even me talking. I was an AI voice. Nah, I was just mouthing my lips. Sometimes it's delivery, yo. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes a whack, so you might say some shit that's whack. I'm like, watch when I use it. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's just about how you do it, man. Yeah. Um, salute our guy, Ed Sheeran. Yo, it was uh, great the way that he won that lawsuit. Yeah. Yeah, Ed listens to Brilliant Idiots podcast. That's a, that's Shout a, out that's Ed, a good man. friend of mine. We need man. Ed on an on a episode, man. He he loves Brilliant. He, he, I mean, he would do it. Let's make it happen next time he's in town getting sued. <laughs> <laughs> but he got sued, basically. They said that he had ripped off the chord sequence for, yeah. I believe, Let's Get It On. Yeah, he wins the second lawsuit over alleged imitation of Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On for and thinking then what, out loud. What he... Uh, what he said is there are a hundred songs or a thousand songs that have used the exact same chord sequence as Let's Get It On. And he just started playing them all in court. And then they went so far as to look back to like the 1700s mm -hmm. to find ancient songs, classical music that was written with the same chord sequence mm -hmm. and it was there. And he was basically like, you can't say a chord sequence is owned by one artist because it's been existing for hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah. What you do with that chord sequence can be a song, but there's a limited amount of chord sequences, I guess, that make sense that are pleasant to the human ear. Yeah, I don't think this happens if Thinking Out Loud isn't one of the biggest records ever. Sure. And I don't think this happens if Ed doesn't, because uh, if you've ever been to Ed's show, when he does Thinking Out Loud, sometimes he does a mashup of Thinking Out Loud and Let's Get It On. Oh. And I so think he... I think I think I think that brought attention to it, and I think just the song being so massive. Yeah, you know what I mean. Oh, and if that, there's and money, that, people gonna find it. And that's why Ed was saying, if I lose this lawsuit, I'm done. Like it's a wrap. Because he understands now. There's precedence to sue over every single song. Absolutely, that's made. absolutely. I think absolutely. he says something like, "It's almost like if um, someone owns the color red." <laughs> like all art, you can't just you have to pay this one person just to use red yeah. for everything. Oh, I'm suing you for your hair, Ed. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Now the lawsuits are endless. Now I'm suing you yeah. for thinking out loud. I'm suing you for your goddamn red hair. I'm suing you yeah. for every motherfucking yeah. thing, man. Salute to Ed, man. I'm, I'm going to see Ed uh, next month. Oh, out in London? No, no, no. He's performing. He'd be perf he's performing in Jersey. Oh, really? Yeah, he's performing uh, in Jersey on the. Maybe I'll go to that on the 11th. You want to go? Yeah. What day of the week is that? Uh, I think it's a Saturday. Saturday or Sunday? I'm not sure if I'm in town. Yeah, June 11th, because it was crazy. My 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 daughter and her friends. I don't know if my daughter is really. It's a Sunday. Yeah, I'll pull up. It's to a that. Sunday. Yeah, my daughter and her friends want to go see Ed. Like like badly. I've seen him in concert. I've, I have too. He's phenomenal, dude. Yeah, that's my guy. That's my guy. I told you I went to the Garden and saw him, and I went to the Garden again in the same 
week to see him. I went Tuesday. And the second time I wore a Knicks jacket in case any of the people who worked at the garden was like, yo, you back again? I thought I thought the Knicks was playing today, bro. I, I didn't even realize. <laughs> I, got, I must have got tickets to the wrong thing, bro. Nah, it's phenomenal. And <laughs> in shape now too, bro. Nah, it, he is so good and he's by himself. I don't know if he still does it like this, but when I saw yeah, him. There's no backup band and nothing. Is this him and his creating, guitar? Yeah, he's creating the drums just by hitting the guitar and then looping it, creating the background guitar. Uh, I mean, it's just so Effortlessly, talented. effortlessly talented. Like so I, that's good. why I said, like, we don't see gifted talents. He's a gifted talent. Like, we come from the era, you had to be gifted to be on. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what it was. Like, yeah. you had to be gifted in whatever it is you did yeah. to get on. We take uh, musicians like Ed for granted nowadays. It's that's like, facts. he's just wow. naturally gifted. I saw Wyclef, he was performing. Gifted. Uh, oh, yeah, Oh, brilliant. my God. Gifted. So he's playing the guitar. And then all of a sudden he starts, he puts the guitar behind his head and just starts playing it behind his head. Then he hops on the drums and he's playing the drums all for the same song. I'm like, yo, yeah. you really created every single part of this the song. Behind the, the behind the head thing might be a little Bill Clinton-ish. Just the, the behind the no, head. No, 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 no. It, it was live. Like I'm telling you, I'm tell, if he once he stopped playing, the music stopped. It wasn't like it was. Uh, Why you hating on my man? So let my man be great. Yo. You know what's so funny? After last week's episode, there was so many saxophone sightings from Bill Clinton. I was getting mad. Oh man, I, like somebody did. Who did? My man uh, uh, Xavier from Trap Nerds DM me. He said. Um, let me see if I can find this shit. He said Bill used to come play at Grambling all the time. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. See? He was so like, you, you was it Grambling? Bill an apology, bro. Nah, nah. The way Bill likes his apologies, I can't do it for him. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't bet. I didn't make a bet with Bill. <laughs> I didn't make, I didn't make a bet. Oh, yeah, he said, he said, I'm he said, I'm listening to Response Fatigue. Episode was funny. Bill can play sax. He came and played at my old college, Grambling State a couple times. Still don't mean he was playing it though. I don't know. That was either Dre or David. They sent it from the Trap Nerd podcast. I don't know. I don't know who sent it. What do you think about this Jamie Foxx story, bro? Um, it goes back to what I've always been saying, and I literally said this two weeks ago on Breakfast Club. I was like, why do we have to speculate what happened to a person? Why do we even care? If we know something happened to a person, why can't we just send our prayers and keep it moving? Yeah. Like, why do we have to come up with these stupid-ass conspiracy theories? Like, I've been hearing some why. I didn't even know these conspiracy theories existed. Yeah. Like, people, oh, somebody put a hit out on Jamie, or Jamie revealed something about Diddy, and I'm like, what the fuck are y'all talking about? Like, yeah. like, it's just wild to me that people have to make up shit. To justify. To justify it. And by the way, Jamie or his family, none of them owe us an explanation about yeah, anything. that's true, that's true. Like, I was, I was having a conversation, and, um, the person was like, would somebody like Jamie spends his whole time trying to make us like him. So he owes us that. I'm like, all he does is his art. Yeah. He acts. Yeah. It's not like he's on social media setting himself on fire every day for attention yeah. and likes and retweets. He acts. We go watch his movies and we love his movies. What else does he owe us other than a good performance in a movie? Yeah, that's true. Like, what the, get the fuck? What'd you, you think, think about it? You don't think it was a little bit strange how media and even close friends of saying like please please pray for him he is not looking good maybe those friends aren't as close as they think they are uh, that's true because I saw people like Kevin Hart saying he's good he's oh really he, Kevin Hart said that on uh, was it Jake Paul not, was, it, was it Logan was it Logan? Logan I don't know if it was Logan Logan's pod. it was somewhere I saw him pod and he was like you know Jamie's stable or he's, he's you know he's he's, he's, uh, re, he's re rehabilitating or whatever I, feel, I forgot how I'm paraphrasing him maybe we can find it and insert it but he said this his people that are close to him were mm. bigging him up. Like, you know what I mean? So it's just like, what are we doing? They even posted from his Instagram account one day, you know, feeling better day by day, appreciate all the love. Like, we made up all this shit in our mind yeah. about what was wrong with Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. Oh, is this it? Oh, yeah, here it goes. Oh, here you go. Here you go, Taylor. Finally. You got it? Some production. Wow. Finally, Taylor. Good shit, Taylor. Mm. The Still dope thing is that he's getting better in this situation. And, you know, everybody's prayers, everybody's um, love, energy, all that stuff is seen and felt. That's what Kevin said. Yeah. He said it. He said this a couple weeks ago. It was that Jake, it was, is that Logan's podcast? That's not Logan, right? Yeah, it's Logan. Oh, impulsive. Yeah, that is impulsive. To be able to just check on him and stuff like that. So, you know, they're being tight and for reasons just about where he is because Jamie's always been a private, private. person to a certain degree. It's like if something happens to Beyonce, God forbid, or Jay-Z, God forbid, would we really expect to know? 
They're private, they're naturally private people. Yeah. And when I think about it, I'm like, shit, Jamie has been a private person. He's out. Like, you see him outside, right. living his best life, but he's not out here spilling his personal business all over the place. Yeah, good point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, Ty something happened to Tyrese. <laughs> We gonna hear about it. We need to know. Yeah, we gonna hear this about it. This motherfucker tells us everything. Yeah, you can't God just stop forbid talking. something happened to Tyrese. But yeah. we, he, that, I feel like I need to know. Tyrese, you tell us everything else. Yeah. Don't get to hide now, buddy. Yeah. You know? Uh, what else we got, Taylor Gang? Congrats to Chris, too, man. Chris, you, you was nominated for, uh, well, we were nominated for uh, Webby, right? No, what was the award show this weekend? Webby's were, what was that, Monday night in Monday New York City? That was Finding Tamika. I crashed. <sighs> Finding Tamika won. Yeah. You was nominated, though. Oh, you guys won? Yeah, Finding Tamika's won in everything, baby. We sweeping up. We really? Flute to, to Eric Alexander and Color Farm. Like, Finding Tamika is, like, it's, it's beyond on fire. If, I can't even, like, if, if you would have to be in the audio world to understand, but it's, it's like the equivalent of winning the Emmy already and the, the Oscar and... They've won everything, like, you know. What do you call that, like the EGART? Or? The EGOT, yeah, the yeah. EGOT. But the EGOT is when you win an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. Finding Tamika's won everything. Like, every major audio award there is. Really? They've won. What's Finding Tamika again? Finding Tamika tells the story of a young lady named Tamika Houston um, who went missing in the early 2000s from Spartanburg, South Carolina. She ended up getting murdered. But that story, her story, sparked so many things, like the uh, the black black. Uh, girl missing foundation or black black and missing foundation um there's there's careers that were started you know what i mean like at the time tiffany cross was at america's most wanted and she you know uh got attached to the case it was like it's, it's just and the funny thing about that story is if you re, if you listen to finding tamika there's something in there i can't remember which chapter it's in but it talks about how everybody who has assisted in tamika getting her story out has been rewarded in, in some way, shape, or form. Because it's got like a supernatural element to it. Like you gotta, like if you have it, man, I'm telling you, it's a great listen. I'm not saying that because it's on our company, SBH Productions. It is a fantastic, fantastic listen on Audible right now. And I mean, it is doing great. And the beauty of it is, it's still telling that story, not just to Tamika Houston, but talking about the epidemic of black and missing women in this country, you know? So yes, go check out Finding Tamika. Yo, and some 85. You know, last weekend was the, like, the anniversary of the bombing? Well, it's May, yeah, May 13th. May 13th. Yeah, so that's, when I went down to Philly, I went down for a, a panel discussion mm -hmm. about the anniversary. Oh, that's, okay, okay, okay. But y'all were nominated, y'all didn't win, though. Uh, I think so, yeah. Hold on, did you watch Guardians of the Galaxy? Of course. of course. Of course. I watched Guardians of the Galaxy. I heard an unbelievable theory about this. Talk to me. First of all, incredible film. It was good. Heartfelt. So heartfelt. I enjoyed it. James Gunn is an absolutely brilliant creator. I enjoyed it. And his ability to like pull at your heartstrings, but in a way that makes you feel happy. I was talking to Shub about this, and Shub was doing some kind of research about like what was specifically so good about the journey and the story. And um one of the things that James Gunn does is he gives characters what they need, not what they want. And that's why when you're crying, if you do, you mm -hmm. smile a bit, right? Mm -hmm. It's like that beautiful scene with the dog. You know, the dog just wants to be told good dog the whole time. And then mm -hmm. that finally he gets, he takes the rocks Validation. and saves his yeah. thing. And then he goes, he's a good dog. And then boom. And you're just like, you want to like cheer. There's like moments where he can induce the reaction of like wooing. So, Shub hit me with this theory. And he goes, you're familiar with James Gunn's history with Marvel? Yes. Do you know about his firing? He got fired for some, it was some Me Too shit, right? Or am I tripping? No, not some Me Too, but it was around, it was tweets like joking about like uh, uh, pedophilia. But yeah, it was yeah, a clearly yeah. sarcasm and jokes yeah. or whatever. But this was at the time where everybody was going back into tweets and like canceling people. So he Before you could blame in, it on Chad GPT. Pardon? Before you could blame it on Chad GPT. Exactly. Yeah. So, so he comes in, uh, Marvel gives him the opportunity and creates Guardians, right? And Guardians becomes kind of the cornerstone of how they're going to make Marvel movies. There's a real shift in Marvel movies after Guardians where yeah. they do like this more comedic Comical approach tone. Yeah, absolutely. that also has like absolutely. heart and everything kind of like, I don't want to say copies, but that is the new version of how you make a Marvel movie. And um, then he gets thrown away and cancels. 
And um, then they realize that they can't recreate it without him. So they have to go back and do anything in their power to get him to come back to Marvel. And if you look at the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, he is Rocket. Marvel is... It's a fuck you to Marvel. So Rocket Raccoon, Marvel is the evolutionary, the high evolutionary, right? Who creates life, gives the opportunity, gives the opportunity to to James Gunn, can't quite get it right. And then all of a sudden the thing that he gave the opportunity, the thing he created had independent thought, something that Marvel couldn't create and made the thing that Marvel couldn't create. So now I need you back. He tries to throw him away because he thinks he can recreate it, but he they cannot create without that thing that Rocket Raccoon made the independent thought. So he does everything he possibly can to get him back to create the thing. And ultimately, he goes, fuck you, I don't need you, I'll go somewhere else. And where is that? DC. Mm. Now, who so, knows if somebody just put this meeting on top fantastic. of the movie, but there are some fucking great fantastic parallels right theory. there. Fantastic and theory. Isn't that fucking cool? I thought Shiv cooked that up. I was like, that's incredible. Fantastic dude. theory. Yeah. And, 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 I mean, yeah, and he starts his own new team at the end. You know what I mean? Where he's the leader. Yeah, no longer a bit player. Mm. Uh, makes perfect sense to me. You're the captain. Run now. with that, right? What is James Gunn doing? Yeah. He is the captain at DC. James Gunn had per- me interested in DC. I hate DC. DC has historically sucked. But I it, but he is so good at <sighs> storytelling yeah. and evoking emotion that like I gotta give him a shot. The flash looks fantastic. The trailers for the flash look fantastic. Oh, I thought you were talking about um designer flying back from Tokyo. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Martha Stewart, an 81-year-old entrepreneur, is the oldest model to have ever graced the cover of the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit. I saw her the other day. Really? She looks great. She looks absolutely fantastic. How do you feel about her gracing the cover of Sports Illustrated? A woman got mad at me the other day because she said, you're supposed to be about women's empowerment and you're shaming her. I didn't shame her not one time. I just I got asked a simple question and I answered it. The question was, am I interested in Martha Stewart on the front of Sports Illustrated? And my answer is no, because I've never been interested in Martha Stewart. I've I mean, she looks in, beautiful. I've never been interested in Martha Stewart. Like, I, I started caring about Martha Stewart when she got paired with Snoop. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't, I'm not, like, I'm not interested in Martha Stewart. I, I, when the last time you picked up a Sports Illustrated, bro? Uh, I mean. That's what I'm saying. Like, never. none of this, like, these aren't my things. Never, yeah. But I mean, she, she does look good for 81. Zoom in on the feet. I got to see those 81-year-old feet right there, them steppers. Nah, bro, that's when you know she's 81. Hold on, hold on. Let me go, go in, go in. Oh, let me get closer. She does, she, 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 she does look They're good. Hating. But the reality of the situation is there's a core audience of Sports Illustrated people who probably don't want this. I mean, there's a lot of shit Sports Illustrated puts out you don't want. Like, I don't need the athlete issue. Like, I don't need to see what a girl who does shot put for a living looks like in a bikini. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not for me. But I think what they're just trying to do is get attention right now because we got so much titties and ass on the internet that you can't just do titties and ass in a magazine. Yeah, you got to be some seasoned You got to have seasoned titties and ass, yeah. Aged TNA, some fine. I mean, she's looking great for 81, bro. Your wife looked like that at 81? You're good. Yeah, man. Your wife looks like that at 81. You're probably dead. You probably clocked out at 74, 75. But you had a good run. You had a good run. You had a good man. run. You had a good run, man. Go out there and show that thing, baby. If you can still get somebody to spike it at 81, do you, boo. <laughs> do you, boo. Yeah, salute to Martha Stewart, man. I need some stem cells, bro. Let's talk about Ron Ron. Who's that? Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Who's Ron DeSantis, yeah? Um, I don't know. I don't think he's running for president yet. He's the governor of Florida right now. Oh, he's the governor of Florida? Yeah, he's officially signed a bill into law that will prevent the university and colleges within the states from spending money on diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. The bill will also limit how race can be discussed within the classroom. It, 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 Ron is interesting what? because Ron does a lot of things that clearly, he's, he's, this is white supremacy, right? Is it? Like, uh, it's not obvious. It's, it's pretty obvious what, how Ron feels. Don't you think? I don't get it. Tell me. Explain this to me. He signed a bill into law that's preventing university and colleges within the state from spending money on diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. <sighs> this limit will, the bill will also limit how race can be discussed within the classroom. So this is what, a reaction to uh, critical race theory? Oh, no, he already did that one. Yeah. That, was, that was a whole other bill that he signed into play for the critical race theory. That was something else, totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because... And then he know. signed the other thing with uh, the migrants. 
because I, I saw a lot of them aren't showing up to the construction sites or something like that because oh, it's yeah, not the key yeah, 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 yeah. Because he basically was like, we're going to ship you guys up north. Like he is like undocumented. If you're undocumented, uh, which is weird. Yeah, we were talking about this on Flagrant too. I think where it's like, what it costs worried. Say ah! what? Cost worried. Not a cost. <laughs> <laughs> what? They coming for? What? <laughs> no, no. They, it was like they don't really got illegal immigrants like that in Florida. Like the illegal immigrants are coming into Texas. They're coming into Arizona. They're coming to California. But like. They're coming into that border over by Mexico. It's hard for legal immigrants to just land in Florida. And the ones that do land, like if they come from Cuba, they're legal. You get the foot on dry land, you're legal in America. That's the rule. Yeah. So I, I think he's doing a lot of like political posturing. And I think he's miscalculating what is most important to Americans. Like the poor guy is floundering. Like Trump just decided to come on the scene and he sucked all the air out the room. And DeSantis really doesn't know what to do. So he's trying to like policy himself into the office. Like I think nobody, working, though. No, no, nobody I, cares, I, I bro. You, nobody I, cares about Disney. Nobody cares about this critical race but those, theory But those shit. are all Florida issues. But the thing that Ron does that is smart, he does these things that become national issues and it makes people in other places who may be with Trump be like, Oh, he on the same shit our guy's on. Our on, not even his, our guy, the same shit the GOP is on. Mm. And so he's doing it from Florida, but it's, it's, it gets so much attention on a national level. If, um, I think I, there's people that say they would rather run than Trump. And there's matchups that show Ron can beat Biden. I think Ron would be Biden. I don't think Trump would be Biden. You don't think Trump beats Biden? But see, that's what people are afraid of. People think Ron, bring the mic in, Chris. People think Ron could beat Biden, but they don't think Trump can beat yeah, I agree. Biden. So I, I Ron agree. might be the better option. I just don't think Ron can even lick Trump's nutsack. But you get Trump, you get Trump out of here. That you gotta, you gotta put him in prison. The only way he doesn't run is if he's in prison. That doesn't make him. I mean, I guess physically, physically yeah. he can't. But if he is physically capable of running, he will run, and then Ron doesn't have a chance. He what, doesn't have the personality when the guy about speaks. Nikki it's Haley weird. Is an alternative. She's not even in the conversation, dude. Yeah, Trump is gonna eat these fucking cornballs alive. The problem with the Republicans that are running is they're all corny. Like, 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 say what you want about Ron, but like when you see him talk, he's kind of corny. Like, he, and then Nikki Haley, I don't even know where the fuck she is. Like, I don't even know what she looks like. South Carolina, anything. former South Carolina governor. Yeah, so it's like you need somebody. Like the thing with George Bush Jr. Say what you want about him, is dude wasn't corny. Like he was not corny. Like, nah, George Bush Jr. was corny. Not you, not you capping right now. He was corny. He had no charisma, no nothing. What are we talking? Let, George, you want to know something? You want to know something honestly? Yeah. George Bush Jr. probably beats Obama. Nah, no, you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind that He one. probably beats Obama. Nah, first of all, George Bush Jr. didn't beat Gore. <laughs> like, what are we talking about here? Like, you're bugging. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> Wait a like, minute, are you saying that elections can be faked? Absolutely. Huh. Yeah, Interesting. 100. percent So is Trump. He is, but the people say that about Trump too. I'm just saying. But that's what they, they all throw that around. There's Trump, some ballots out there they, that they we said, need they, to be they, they said Trump stole the election in 2016. Of course. Like, this is what it is. Okay. It is. So uh, I didn't know they said that. I thought that was an easy victory for him in 2016. I don't think they said that. They said, said he they, didn't win the popular vote. Yeah, they said the Russians, uh, that's, what they, that's what the whole Russian Anyway, did you guys happened? watch Succession last Sunday? No, night? but I heard it's great and everybody likes that stupid show. <laughs> I need my daddy's approval. I'm rich and white, and I need my daddy's approval. I know I could go fuck off to my mansion somewhere in the world and be totally okay, but daddy will like me. Da, 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 da. I thought you love HBO shows. Bro, that show stinks. Really? I tried to get into that show, and that show is like, the, these are the most boring white people. I understand like white people didn't grow up with these people. Yeah, They're like yeah, yeah. fascinated by it. They're like, rich legacy money, what's it like? But like I knew people kind of like this growing up and they're just the most boring fucking people. And the, the idea that like everyone on that show could just move somewhere and live rich with no problems and they choose to be involved in this makes me incapable of caring about the show. That there is, are no that is real the Achilles stakes. Heel. That Say is again? The, that is the Achilles heel. That is the Achilles heel, the Achilles uh, fucking ACL, the Achilles yeah. labrum, the, every part of your fucking body that can tear, that's what it is. And I cannot get into the show. I'm sorry. I've tried. I've tried. Well, anyway. Daddy, but Dada. Oh, I'm well, sorry. Was Dada, Dada, Dada don't like me. Dada won't give me company. Dada. So it's not the Kardashians is what you're saying. Yeah. Bro. The dad's dead in the Kardashians. <laughs> Hold 
Hold on now. You mean like dead named or like? No, he's there is no dead. Oh, Robert. Yeah, I thought yeah. you were talking about Caitlyn. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking Nobody give a fuck about Caitlyn's approval. About nobody really cares was. about okay, Caitlyn's gotcha, approval. Gotcha, gotcha, but now, gotcha. Chris, Chris, that might be it. Yeah, yeah, Chris yeah. Chris yeah, might yeah, got yeah. it like that. So secession needs somebody just telling a dog it's a good dog, and now you're on board with it. Well, that, if that's it, what pulls it. Are you if, shitting on Guardians of the Galaxy? No, 3? I'm just saying, that, like, Secession is a good show, and he just hates something that everyone else loves. That's Andrew Schultz. Am I the biggest dick rider of HBO? Yes, you are. Have, name a bigger I'm not dick. HBO. I'm a dick rider. You celebrate shows on HBO. Name a bigger. I call. I call myself a dick rider of HBO. Okay. <laughs> okay. Am I? Did I just celebrate one of the most popular movies ever, Guardians of the Galaxy? Yes, you did. Yes, okay. you did. So you can't you say loved, that I'm just uh, hating loved, on the popular. You love The Last of Us. I love Last of Us. I love everything popular. I'm Mr. Top Forty. If it's popular, yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. And Succession is I, popular. Maverick, Top Gun Maverick, I love it. I don't want to hear everybody's like artsy take about it. It's why I love popular stuff. I love artsy shit. I love I watch one episode of that fucking hotel show on HBO, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is fucking incredible. I get the hype. Succession sucks. <laughs> and if you like it, you suck. <laughs> so are you calling it Succession? It's, that's how they should spell it. S U C K. You just don't understand stakes if you like the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, lo you're literally looking at rich white people that can leave their problems and choose to stay in it and going, I hope it works out. That's gay. That's, 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 that's <laughs> gay. Yo, sitting every Sunday going, I hope rich white people stay rich is the biggest loser shit I've ever seen. Oh, you, dude, no, this, you this, are a loser. Bro, 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 dude, I don't want to hear no shit. I've about, never seen it. So I don't, don't want to hear no shit about white supremacy. I don't want to hear no shit about the white patriarchy. If you are not white and you're watching every Sunday, like, I hope it works out for the rich white people that control that's the media. Why we watch My it. wife likes it. The only reason I know yeah. about it is it's, because it's, it's like, satirizing those people. Boo! Boo! This show stinks. This guy. This show. Stinks. You don't watch it. This is it. Daddy, can you put your balls on my face, Daddy? No, but Daddy, I want balls on my face, Daddy. Is incest? It would be more interesting if it was incest. <laughs> it would be better if all of them just did the thing they want to do and sucked the old guy's dick. Is it serious? Say what? Yeah, it's a serious. Yeah. Taylor says oh, it's a series. <laughs> it sucks, dude. It is so bad. It's so bad. But they made it just like the election in 2016. Oh, God. He's like Rupert Murdoch. Right. <laughs> just give so a couple bad, months. Dude. His wife will start watching it and then it'll be it's like, so oh, bad. I tried to force myself to like it. Couldn't like it. Damn. Bro, uh, um, watch Guardians of the Galaxy. Save your time. Classic. Watch a dog do what its owner wants him to do <laughs> and just feel all the joy from That's that right. moment. That That's is right. beautiful. Salute the cosmic. Um, oh, this just came in. Uh-oh. Comment. DeSantis signs more bills today. Oh, God. DeSantis signs bill aimed at transgender care pronouns and drag shows. Wait, what does it say? <laughs> what does it say? That's what, that's what the bill is. It's uh, DeSantis signs bill aimed at transgender care pronouns and drag shows. LGBTQ advocates dubbed the measures the slate of hate and an all-out attack on freedom. He signed a series of bills on Wednesday taking aim at Yo, transgender treatment for minors, pronouns in schools, question, bathroom you know, use, and keeping children out of drag schools. Let, let me ask you a question. He said, we're not doing the pronoun Olympics in Florida. Mm -hmm. All right, this is the cooking. type of stuff he that gets you, that's what I'm saying. This, this, right this stuff that gets you attention cooking. on a national level. Yeah. No, okay, so here's the thing about the the drag the, the drag queens teaching in the schools or, or reading and reading to the kids or whatever like that. Here's the thing about that. Everybody goes like, if you uh, reject this, then you hate LGBTQs, you hate transgender, you hate whatever, right? You've heard that before? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever seen a drag show? No. Have you ever seen a drag show? Yeah. Have you ever seen a I've, drag I've show? I've taken my kids to drag shows. You have taken your kids to drag yes. shows? Okay. Why? You're a, you're a fucking weirdo. <laughs> yeah, like, 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 seriously, why? Fucking why, Chris? Weirdo. You should be put in prison, you fucking like, weirdo. Like Chris, why? Listen, no, no, hold, like, hold, 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 hold on a second. Let me tell you something. Drag shows are some of the funniest, okay? Raunchiest. Is it anything like RuPaul's Drag Race? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I've watched RuPaul's Sassy, Drag Race. Okay, okay, okay. Hilarious. Uh, talented. I'm talking about dancing and uh, a lot of th a lot of the singing is not actual singing. It's a lot of it's like uh, what is it called? Lip syncing, whatever. But they like, choreograph to it. But and they have like they're they have like actual stand up jokes. They like yeah. build in fucking bits. Like some of these dudes could do stand up. 
But after seeing a drag show, no part of you should go, I need my kids to watch this shit. No part of so you. So it's adult humor is what you're saying. It's the most adult. The most adult. Well, I seen it at the restaurant. You know, they used to have that restaurant where it's like, it would be drag people performing while they're they, serving They do it a lot, like, but you're talking about the one that's on First Avenue between uh, House and First? Yeah, it's now Or closed. First and Second. It's now closed, but it yeah. used to be. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, that you could bring kids So you used to, to go for the entertainment nah, bro, purposes? That was wild sexual, bro. The whole thing is sexual. Uh -huh. It's part of the It's part of the shtick. Maybe it's hilarious. It's a play in Chicago. Chicago is a Broadway play. Yo, if you see me it. do stand-up, you shouldn't be like, I need my kids to watch this shit. I agree with that. <laughs> right? And if anybody saw my stand-up and was like, we need Schultz to read to six-year-olds, I would understand if parents would be like, that motherfucker? <laughs> that crazy motherfucker so, that's so, making those wild-ass jokes? I don't want my kids seeing these wild-ass so, so jokes. What, so what you're saying is it's not the drag, it's the content of the- Exactly. Like, oh. it's not dressing up. People have dressed up their entire lives yeah, in front yeah, of yeah. children. You see it every single time in Times Square. They dress up as Minnie Mouse. It's not a fucking mouse that yeah. can talk. Like, there's t fine to do dress up, it doesn't matter. But the content of a drag show is specifically raunchy and sexual. And seeing that, and then going, wait a minute, my kids are gonna get that? My only you have pushback, every right to my, reject it and be like, what the it, fuck is going my on? My only pushback on that is that the drag queens aren't doing the drag show exactly. for the kids. That's such a dumb my point, story. Yeah, 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 I understand that. But my point is, if you're a parent that doesn't know that and only got is familiar you, with you, drag shows, you, and you. all you see is drag show for kids in the headlines, you're gonna go, it, you're, you're not a bigot for going, Wait, why the fuck would we pick the hilarious, funny, raunchy people to read to the kids? It's not even that Shots, deep, man. Bro. You really think that's the problem? You don't think it's that's a fact? That's the problem for me? You don't think it's the fact of seeing a grown-ass man dressed in woman clothes that might confuse their child and the people who are a bit more close-minded to that type of thing? That's not the issue. I'm gonna be no, honest no, no, with you. That's <laughs> also the issue. What I'm saying is the rational person that doesn't see that, like a, a, a rational person like me, right? Yeah. Who has gone to drag shows, thinks they're fucking hilarious. My wife watches RuPaul's Drag Race all the time. Drag culture, awesome, great, perfect, mm -hmm. hilarious, entertaining. In no way am I seeing that and going, they need to read stories to kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Chris, no way. And we, I think that me saying that and having that re reaction, a lot of parents having that reaction, does not make us bigoted. It goes, I don't understand why you're taking the hilarious, raunchy thing and making them read to kids. Just like I don't understand why anybody would ask me to read to kids. If I'm also the hilarious, raunchy guy who says the really offensive things and some parents are like, bro, I don't need you making blackface jokes to children. Like, what the fuck is going to confuse them? And I go, well, it's my humor. It's fun. It's like, no, no, they're six. They don't need to hear your crazy, offensive humor. Mm. I wouldn't call them uh, not progressive. I wouldn't call them too conservative. I'd be like, I get it. Chris, thoughts? Uh, well, why did I take my kids? I'll start there. I live across. I won't. <laughs> that no, I, I, I won't. I won't know. Know. I okay, go ahead. I, I won't say which one. I live across the street from a major cultural institution in New York City, which puts on all sorts of cultural free shows. And I try to take my kids when they were younger to everything that was available because that's why I'm paying the rent I pay in New York City to have access to that stuff. So, so it's free. It's free, right? Yeah. Insert joke. No. I okay, didn't. okay, okay. I, I thought I thought you were going somewhere with that. Not at all. Jew! <laughs> <laughs> what? Sorry, sorry. Wait, what? What, 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 what? what? That's sorry. That just jumped out of me. I'm sorry. My bad. Chris, Chris is Jewish, though. Wait, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is. Yes, yes, throw yes. that out this. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I, I have yeah, yeah. been to the Whoa, show. that was crazy. Right. I didn't even know. I, I blacked out right there. Right. <laughs> I just blacked out, and that came out of me. Okay, go on. And it, look, so I take my kids Two times there were drag shows across the street from my house. Two times my kids went. They were not, I've been to the shows, I forget the restaurant's name on the Lower East Side. I know the one you're talking yeah. about. Those are raunchy, those are sexual. These were not that. It was people singing, essentially. Both times my kids found it incredibly boring and we left after 10, 15 minutes. It was what it was. It didn't, I don't think, change their lives one way or the other. There wasn't anything that I thought, there was a little sexual innuendo, sure, but... If your kid's growing up in New York City, they see way worse than that on the street every day. There's nothing to get uptight about. I can't speak to whatever these books are people are allegedly reading across the country. This is much ado about nothing. There was nothing going on. That, that you know what it feels like? It feels like, uh, and, I, and I saw uh, the, the, the good sister Erica, uh, Erica Lachelle, Lachey. I'm, I'm, I know I'm messing up her last name. I saw her talk about the other day how, you know, we, we get stuck in this world of stupid pod, podcast questions. <laughs> And we can actually insert uh, Erica if we want to, but uh, yeah, Eric Lash Erica Lachey, 
Lachey or Lachey. I'm sorry, Erica, if I messed your last name up. This is why I want us to be released from the clutches of stupid podcast questions. As a community, we discuss all sorts of situations and hypotheticals that will likely never occur because it's entertaining. We really have to think about the ramifications of a lot of these dumb conversations. Because all the men in the comments were saying that, see, this is what's wrong with modern women because they won't serve their man. But it's like, who's going to ask somebody to do something like that in the first place? I'll be happy when thinking critically comes back in style. Because there's no trophy in feeling accomplished by being able to debate nonsense more intelligently than somebody else. Um, she talks about how we get caught up in these convers these stupid podcast questions, and she was uh, specifically re referencing if you're if you came home at three a.m. Would you wake your, Would your wife wake up to cook you a meal or something? And I'm like, that is a stupid podcast question mm -hmm. because why the fuck? Number one, why would you be eating at three in the morning? Yeah. That's number one. And number two, why would you want your wife to wake up to cook at three in the morning? That's just a stupid podcast question. But this conversation feels like a stupid podcast question because I could be wrong. Where did this even come from? I've never known. When did drag queens start reading the kids? I never even knew about this. It's, I think that's the reaction most people have to it. I'm not saying it can't be hilarious. I'm not saying it can't be awesome. And I'm not saying the kids won't love it. What I'm saying is a knee-jerk reaction for someone who has been to drag shows and likes drag shows and frequents them. There's going to be some confusion because they're going, hold on, it's not that show for the kid. I don't yeah. want my kid to see that just yet. One day when they're older, I'll take them because it's fucking hilarious. But right now, uh, and then they go, well, no, they're actually just going to read to them. And then you go, okay, but why? Shows, when and uh, where did this happen? Happened in like 40 schools in New York or something. Why like that. though? My, that's my point. Like, why? Uh, as, as a parent of two children. Because George Soros is trying to turn all our kids yeah, into sure, LGBTQ. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> if you are a parent, if you are why worried. Why would you want them to be restaurants? Right. <laughs> you hear what he said? He said LGBT BBQs. LGBBQs. <laughs> LG Dallas BBQs. That's if, <laughs> if you're a parent and you're worried about your kids being exposed to what you consider inappropriate sexual content, you do not have to be worried about drag shows. Do you know what you have to be worried about? It's called the internet. That's, that's where your fact. kids are going all day, every day, soaking up stuff that's a thousand times more explicit than any drag show book reading. I mean, it's like, come on. And they're getting dragged, yeah, no, depending nobody, on what they wear to school. Right? Nobody's saying depending that. Depending on what they say, yeah, I, I they're getting dragged on that internet. Yeah, they are. Wait, what are you doing right now? <laughs> what do you mean? I feel like you're doing something no, right now. I'm not. Yeah, you are. You're no. doing a little thing. So <laughs> you're doing a little thing right now. No, yeah, you are. You're being naughty. You're being naughty. You're doing something naughty. What are you doing over there? Hey, hey, Stella. Uh, what are you doing over there? Yeah, I, I don't think anybody's questioning what you're saying, Chris, and I think most people would agree. As long as the content is totally uh, normal for those kids, it doesn't matter if they're in a dress or not in a dress. Who gives a fuck? I don't care. I think that it is normal to be familiar with the type of content and then seeing them in schools and question, well, what are they going to do there? Just like it would be normal to see my content and then question why I'm talking I to I think anybody them. would question like if they saw a bunch of drag queens walk into a school. And that's okay to like question like, something. Like that would be like I, that would that's an obvious question. If I pull up to my kid's school and I see a bunch of drag queens, I'm like, well, oh, oh. but then, like, why, why the hell are all the drag queens going? But to then this? you see these weird videos where like the drag queens are saying things that are, are sexual. Maybe it's not at school. Maybe it's at a performance. And then you have the the weird videos where like a kid is putting a dollar in the drag queen's like shirt. And there's a now listen. I'm sure that this is the vast minority, minority, minority of these situations. But you see it, and all of a sudden that colors how you look at all the other ones and then parents get concerned, right? So, I, I, I listen, I'm trying to have some empathy for parents who, I imagine, Chris, you can speak to this, Charlamagne, you can speak to this, where it's probably very vulnerable to have your children go to an institution and you just have to trust I'm that institution you. that is gonna teach them all the things that you want them to know. And then if they learn some shit you don't want them to know, you gotta correct it at home. It's vulnerable, the bro. Schultz is not wrong, and the problem I have with the country that we live in today, we all share so much space with each other, yeah. and it's almost like if you have one side that agrees with something, you demonize the other side for not agreeing. Yeah. I, I, I have no, if somebody said to me there's drag queens reading to my kids, the first thing I would wanna know is why? That, that's all I'm saying. Like, why drag that, queens? Like, what, like, why, ask, I, why it's okay drag, to ask why? Why drag queens? You, 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 by the way, I would feel yeah. like that if somebody said, hey, man, they got a bunch of blood reading to the kids at the school. Yes. Why? 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 I want to know why. Why are so many black people in the school? What? Shut up. Wait, what? Wait, what? I really want to know why. Yeah. 
that's the reasonable response. But a lot of parents are just like your first initial thought was is like you hear of drag queens and then immediately just like, no, but what's I'm wrong against with that? that. Because I it's have like, no problem if a parent feels that way. Yeah, but you're you don't even know what you're objecting to. You're just like seeing an image or you're told something and then but you're that's just like, why the why is important. Because in yeah, my mind, I'm like, saying. drag queens, and I've I've, and I've seen like, yeah. you know, I've seen RuPaul drag race and I've seen the Broadway play Chicago. I've seen what I think drag queens do. I didn't know yeah. that they, you know, did all of that, what you said, the content, like the jokes and all of that. Oh, that's great. But it's great. If I saw, if I knew that, I would want to know little why. If somebody said to me, Andrew Dice Clay is reading the kids in the school, I'd be like, why? Exactly. Exactly, my friend. <laughs> like, You'd be like, why? Like, and, why? And, if, and if the first question is why, instead of fuck that, shut it down, I think that we get to a better place. But the reality is you're going to have parents that have an irrational fear of things happening to their children because that's what happens when you love something more than anything in the world, right? Yeah. You go, I want to protect it. And your knee jerk is going to be, take a stance to protect it without even realize maybe there's nothing to protect it from. But if those parents asked why and they were explained, you know, what we all know about these situations, I'm sure they'd probably go, all right, this isn't that crazy. As long as it's nothing sexual and they're literally just reading and they're not trying to push any kind of agendas. It's just like a funny, goofy, cartoony thing for them to watch read. Like, I don't think anybody would have a problem if the they came dressed up as Ariel from The Little Mermaid, regardless if it was a girl or boy. Yeah. Right? I think they'd probably be okay with it. So By the way, I still, Chris, even with you, I still have not, you still haven't told me the why. I told you the why. Free, free, bro. Free. Oh, no, no, no. I'm saying, why are drag queens coming to speak to kids at schools? Not you taking your kids to the show. I'm talking about why are drag queens coming to read the kids at school? I don't know why kids, drag queens are coming to schools. I got to be honest. What do the kids say? Cap? I think this is a lot of cap, and I think there have been one or That's two what I'm situations saying. I across real. the country, no, I man. Like 40 schools in New York alone. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, I, I'll put it like this I understand why it's happening now because this has become such a hot uh, topic that. Maybe they want to dis demystify what drag queens are, who they are. I mean, well, I can understand it now, but where this drag started. Drag queens aren't mystified. That's never been the situation. It's There's obviously some curiosity about LGBTQs, but not about drag Some queens. of this shit got to stop you. I, I, my, my daughter was telling me some shit the other day about a parent who came to the school complaining about the Little Mermaid and the... the, 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 the what about it? Was, it was some shit about the Little Mermaid only depicts... Uh, images of beautiful girls and Ursula is, is, is fat shaming Ursula. I, it was, it, I'm like, what the fuck? Is, I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Like, exactly what? I, when she's explaining it to me, and I'm like, huh? They've armed the children with uh, no, sensitivity. This, no, this was a parent coming to complain, and uh, the parent was like complaining about. Tell her. your kid and eat less snacks. Yeah. You got a fat was fucking it, kid. Parent fat. I have no idea. Had to be. I'm listening to what my Parent daughter is fat, telling me. Kid is fat, and she's like, "Why does my daughter want to be Ursula?" The, cr the crazy thing is, <laughs> the, here's the crazy thing: the, the kids were laughing. The kids were laughing at the adult, yeah. trying to figure out what the fuck is she talking about. Yeah, these are the kids. Yep. So we think that we're these woke adults, and we're coming to help the kids out. They look at it and it's like, "What are y'all talking about, bro?" Yeah, it's just a little goddamn. Room. Tell her get a job, yo. Tell uh, her to get a fucking job. Let's do some asking idiots, Taylor. No, there's a lot of hope for Cause I, cause I got the younger start. generation, though. Because they're growing up with all this shit. So. And they're like, we done. Yeah. They're not offended by shit. They think that the, the generation above them is all pussy and, and cry and, about and, everything. And shit ain't making no sense. And if there you is no way and, Gabrielle and, Union is and, splitting the bill with... Uh, Dwayne Wade. I don't think she meant it like that. The more I, 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 I thought that first. Women when I first think heard it. when they split a bill once that they pay for like half the shit. Like they have bill dysmorphia, where it's like you know, how, like, you, do you know what you know what I'm saying? Do you know what you know? How, like sometimes women think that they're they're fatter than they are. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's body dysmorphia. They also have pay for shit dysmorphia, where like if a woman pays for things like one out of 150 times. She's like, oh, I paid for half of it. Yeah. I don't even think she meant it like that. I thought I don't think she was saying splitting like the mortgage bill. I feel like she was saying like if he got the mortgage bill, you I think got Dwayne the Wade has a mortgage? Yes. Oh, okay, sorry. Well then You do? That's how rich people buy shit. It depends how much the house is. Yeah, they let the government they let the they let the banks pay for that shit. I'm just saying like with like say she gets the daycare schooling. Bill. Yeah, she like, paid like, for her little like, bullshit and then Dwayne Wade pays for I everything. didn't I, the, I the think. more I think about it, I think she simply was saying we live in a house where things are 50 50. Like, do you and your wife look at your money as your money and her money as her money? Or is y'all have a, it's y'all's because y'all are family. We look at my money as our money and her money as her money. 
<laughs> and that's what every relationship is. And we like it that way also. Yeah, I don't, I don't, in our house, our money is our money. Yeah, but you're not going, I'm gonna need 50% of of your of your shit. No, but that's what I mean. It's, it's a like we're, it's like CEOs. Like we're the CEO. Her money is we're for both her to, CEOs of this company that we call our family. You know what I mean? My wife has an incredible job. She works for the fucking greatest tech company in history. She makes great money. I say that's your money. I say it's our money or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I want her to have money so she has the freedom to do whatever she wants and doesn't feel like she got to ask me for shit. But y'all, in y'all family, is a 50 50 thing, right? Yeah, I don't have a prenup, man. This is our money. But we're, that's what I mean. Like, together, like, yeah. like, but even when it comes to making decisions and things like that, like y'all talk about it as a family, right? Yeah. That's how I took what Gabrielle was saying about the way. Like, we're 50 50 in our. Relationship, yeah, you know what I mean. Like that's that's what I took it as. At first, I was like, "Oh, she talking about bills," but then the more I listen to it, I'm like, "I don't think she's just talking about bills." And then she kind of reposted. She yeah. she posted something where she was like, "I, I love when he matches my energy 50 50 I like, like that. I, I yeah, and I also don't think fifty fifty means you're splitting everything. I think that like fifty fifty is the aggregate. You know, so it's like, okay, maybe I pay for more shit, but maybe she's doing more shit for our home. Yeah. Maybe she's doing more shit for our life. Maybe like all these things should come together to be around 50-50. And I think once you feel like you're putting up half and that other person is putting up half, then you have, uh, there's no resentment. There's no like ill will towards anybody. Nobody feels like they're taken advantage of. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the easy way to do that with friends is just we split the bill. Yeah. That's easy. But when you have a relationship, there's other responsibilities. And maybe remember. both of their income goes into a uh, joint account. Sure. Her little, I doubt little, that. Her little bullshit uh, goes into his account. Sure. But that's not to say that it's like she's contributing. Yeah, Gabrielle does very well for herself. Yeah, she's, just, not. she's not Dwayne Wade, but who is? That's what, what I'm what saying. Mean? Compared to him, her little trinkets are going to be part of it. But it's that. not like <laughs> she could put a couple coins in there, but it's not going to be actually like real yeah, money. Compared Gabrielle to Dwayne could Dwayne. be on her own and still be rich. Yes. Yeah. She has been for a long, long, long time. Gabrielle was making money before Dwayne Wade, actually. No. Yeah. Yes, he was. Yeah, she Gabrielle been in Hollywood for so long? Absolutely. Um, all right, let's do some asking idiots and get the fuck up out of here. How old is she? She's older than him? Yeah, Gabrielle, you just like... Near four. I she think was, she's 50. She was acting really young. Oh, she's see, 50 girl. years. She is absolutely beautiful. Jesus yeah. Christ. For, yeah, she's I mean, 50. She's no 50, disrespect, exactly. obviously, to Dwayne, but that, that that is a stunningly beautiful woman. She's 50 yeah, years she's old? 50. Yeah, she's 50. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... She's 50. I'm, like, blown away right now. Man, she's 50, man. Black, hello. It ain't all black people. It's about... Yeah. I, that's the thing yeah, that's annoying. Like saying that shit. Not I all did. black people age that well. She is, do, she is like... You know what they say? Black don't crack. Like, I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm certain about this. Black don't crack, but black gets fat. Black blows up. And see, that's what happens over time. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So you can still look good, but you... <laughs> All right. Balloon. All right, Sean. What? I'm just saying. That's the truth. Black don't crack. What do they say about Puerto Black don't crack. Black get... Same thing. What Puerto Rican. What? Same thing. That spread. <laughs> Same thing. What about white? What happens to white? Yeah. Crack. You just crack. <laughs> it's just fucking crack. Porcelain. <laughs> what do you mean? What are you talking about? Now, but a nice, fine white, like a white that does age well? Mm. Wow. Let's do it. A seen Monica it. Bellucci. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Y'all need to know more whites, bro. I have no Y'all idea. Y'all really need is. to know more right. whites, bro. Expand your world. Monica Bellucci. I have no idea. You who never that seen is. The Matrix? No. I mean, I've seen The Matrix, but I don't know Wait, which one. Black hair? The the girl that is married to the Merovingian. Oh, she's a nice one. But she's Beautiful. French, though. That don't count. I think right. Italian. Or maybe she's French, but yeah. one of those. That don't count. We got, no, no, no. We need That'll, to include them. We need no, to include can't. them. Yes, just because they didn't get lucky enough to get over here doesn't mean that we can't include them as part of our race. We need those hits. Those are big hits. Nah, she's nice, though. Yeah. She's beautiful. Stunning. Um, What's her name? Gabrielle Union is 50 years 50 old. 50 years old, right? Wow, she is beautiful. 
Uh, ask an idiot. Life was there. If y'all met in high school, would y'all be friends? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. But we would be kicked out of high school. Oh, man. my God. They would do that shit oh where, like, God. they keep us in separate classes. Oh, my God. They did that with me and Jamil. <laughs> oh Jamil my and God. I, in high school, we went to high school, it was only 100 kids per grade, right? And they never put Jamil and I in not one single class. That's right. Don't put them next to each go- other. Exactly. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. for, for me, life has always been about the funny. Oh, and yeah. if you read my first book, Black Privilege, all I talked about was in high school, all we was after was what we called a good laugh yeah. and we would literally say that good laugh good laugh yeah. every day was about finding the good laugh and anybody could get it it did not matter yeah. if you were on crack if you were evicted if you got fat you were going to get it we would laugh at your parents everybody <laughs> would it was the best time it was the most best Horrible. time. You come to school with a Horrible. terrible haircut. Horrible. It did not matter. Like, and we were in our school growing up, the Berkeley Independent, they would put like if you got evicted. Yeah. They would put like if you got arrested. You would know it's a small town, so everybody knows oh, no. everything about everyone. Oh, no. So there was nothing off limits. Oh no. Nothing no, was no, off no. limits. So yes, me and Schultz would have absolutely been friends in high school because it was just all about who was willing to fucking take their balls and throw them up against the goddamn chalkboard. <laughs> Literally and figuratively sometime. What were you willing to do to make sure we got a good laugh yeah. today? <laughs> okay? That's all it was about. That's literally all it was about, yo. Um, Aunt Sauce 89 says, yeah. have you ever seen yeah. someone with a gap in their <laughs> there teeth? There was a teacher. <laughs> what? Tell me, tell this me. One, shut tell it down. Me, tell there me, tell me. a teacher that was big, right? And this teacher, she would be like, she would teach math. And uh, she was big. I remember this teacher. We were fucking around. She turned around quick and her like heel got caught or something like that. And she started falling and oh. she fell. Oh. And, and, and one of my boys oh. just went, one of my boys just went, Timber! <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> Fat Falls. Oh, they, they are the best. Fat, I remember yeah. walking to class one day, man. This girl had on a Phoenix Suns oh, yeah, like starter that. jacket. Yeah, yeah. And we're watching. It was like everything just started going in slow motion. Yeah, and she's yeah. on the top step. Yeah. And I don't know how all of us locked in on her at one time. Yeah. But she tripped on that step. Oh, no. And she's falling, but it's like in slow motion. Yeah. My cousin, as he's talking, he goes, and it's, it was it was like commentary, like somebody shooting a shot. He goes, I think the sun is setting. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and she just hits the ground. Good oh, laugh. That's a good hysteria. laugh. Hysteria. That's a good I laugh. I mean, when I say hysteria, <laughs> hysteria. Oh, God. He was terrible. Terrible humans. <laughs> terrible, terrible humans. Um, I'm underscore the ish. This is a crazy question. What Charlotte's favorite white boy thing was Andrew's favorite N-word thing? Why couldn't you just say black? Yeah, I think you need to say black for me to answer this. (laughs) I don't think I can answer this. Uh, We're going to answer what my favorite black thing is. You answer your favorite white boy thing. Go. Uh, What's my favorite white boy thing? That's a good question. What is my favorite white boy thing? I think the... I think the... Uh, the fearlessness of white humor, I like mm. a lot. I think that's my favorite white boy thing. The, f- the fearlessness of white humor. The fearlessness of white humor. Okay. My favorite black thing was um, the fearlessness of black men around white dudes dating a black woman. Shut the fuck up. No, that's the best. <laughs> that's my favorite thing. This is my favorite thing. Oh, you can't handle all that. <laughs> She's right here, bro. You know what I mean? Hey, oh, you can't handle all that. Dr. Umar Come sitting around. Come back home when you ready. Dr. Umar sitting around fuming right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a good We can end on this one. Okay, Matt go. Salazar. See, this is what I mean when I say the fearlessness of white humor. Schultz. Yes. Fuck, marry, kill. Oh, God. Akash. Joe Rogan or Lenard Charlemagne. Mm. Um, I gotta marry. I gotta marry Charla because that's my longest relationship. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm happy about that. You know what I mean? Um, really? I didn't know that. I mean, that's my longest relationship, man. I've been with this man for ten years. I thought you, all three. I'm talking about like doing a piece of content. Mm-hmm. Um. So you're marrying me. So you have to fuck or kill 
Akasha Rogan. Okay, I got it. Ready? Okay. Okay. I marry you. Okay. Okay. I got to fuck Akash because he's only had sex with one woman. So this will be the second Shut person up. he's had sex with. So, be so that will be like, I'm going to bust his cheat and he's yeah, going to yeah. love it. I'm going to show him all the things he's been missing out on. Like, That's right. It'll be That's something right. I could really do for him. That's right. And then <laughs> Rogan, I think as long as I kill him with a bow, like if I, <laughs> if I, if I hunt him, like if I take him out into the forest <laughs> and I actually, yeah, like if I hunt him and I hit him from like at least like a hundred meters, yeah. I think it will hit him and he'll look and he'll be like, what the fuck? And he'll be like, Schultz, what a shot. Like, I like that. That's how you do it. Make sure you use all the meat, use all the parts of the body. Like, I think he would really, re it would be like an honor. It'd be like respect. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think that's good. <laughs> I think Wait, that would be good. I can't believe how sex with one You're a real friend, wife, yo. Son. That, I don't believe you. Because Akash would have to go. Rogan's podcast is too phenomenal to get rid of Rogan, bro. Damn. He, I mean, you are right. Love Akash, though. Love Akash, I'm just speaking I, yeah. from a strictly content perspective. No, no, we can't lose Rogan. You can't lose Rogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, can't lose can't, uh, we can't lose Charlotte. <laughs> Sorry, and we Akash. can't lose. We can't, no, we can't lose Akash. That's why I do the podcast with Akash. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Damn, Akash. Wow. Ask me when Rogan is ready to go. And I go, you know what? You get to be the elk today. He comes to me and he goes, <laughs> Rogan goes, listen, he's like 95 years old. And he, yeah. goes, and he goes, he goes, listen, I'm ready to go, but I want to go in a special way. I want to be the elk. And I go, you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, yeah. And I get the bow and I follow my, he's at a watering hole. He's just drinking out of the water. <laughs> That's it. I think if you presented this to Akash, he's, Akash he's a bow hunter. Oh. He's a bow hunter. I think if you presented this to Akash, he'd sacrifice himself. <laughs> No, I do. I think Akash cares about content that much that he would say, you know what? Let me go. Let me go. Yeah, I think so. You think? I think so. All right. We love you, Akash. One woman. Go up there, man. We need you up there in heaven, man. Call the place for the Cowboys. Stuck on that. Yo. Because <laughs> See, you're so stuck what on that. You know, that's Ma real, though? Mark like, only had sex with one woman, too. Shut the fuck up. I only yeah. hang with virgins, yo. What did Taylor say? <laughs> I only hang with virgins. And Charlotte's a gay virgin. That's why I hang with her. <laughs> what did, what, I don't even know what Taylor said just now. She, go, she can't believe Akash only slept with one girl that's and his, Mark only his, slept uh, with one girl. His, his culture too, though, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Hey, hey, hey. Well, what's Mark's? Say again. Catholic. Mark is Catholic. Yeah, not all of us are going to hell like you. No, Mark definitely going to heaven because that motherfucker could have been out here fucking everything. With really? That that's it. And I was like, Mark's not fucking nobody? Mark could have been out here fucking everything. Yeah, yeah, Mark don't get to heaven. Akash might have not been his choice. I ain't worried. Right. <laughs> yo, I can see why Akash in there was. Shit. But Mark. <laughs> no, y'all no, need no, 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 You ain't disagreed either. I'll just say that's what you said. Mark has a Jordan's hair. Like, what? Yeah, Mark. Black people care so much about good hair, they're like, nah, he could be sorry. Pussy, bro. I'm you, bro. Listen, imagine all of us. Nice imagine face. 60 years from now, all of us pass away, and Mark, why are you here with us? <laughs> you didn't make it to heaven. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Bro. With that face, and you only had sex with one woman. Yeah, he ate meat during Lent, and God is strict. Imagine <laughs> that. Imagine that. <laughs> He's like, I didn't think God really cared about Lent like that. <laughs> Oh, man. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.